The following program is a collection of students talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. <laughs> the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pig! Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Sport, 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 sport. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to our humble abode, the Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 10th, 2023, this sports program starts now. Football is happening every single day with storylines and games in week five of the NFL season wrapped up last night in Seton City as the Las Vegas Raiders got their second win of the season over the Green Bay Packers. Now, also big day today on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 10th, because the NHL officially drops puck tonight. Woo! New NHL season uh, starts this evening, and in prime time at 8 o'clock, the Pittsburgh Penguins, home of Sidney Crosby, Geno Malkin, and Chris Letang, what? a trio that has played together longer than any trio in the history of sports, plays host to the next one. The new generation of hockey. Mm -hmm. A man who, since he's been like 12 years old, they said this guy is going to be the face of the NHL. He has lived up to the hype thus far, but tonight is his first ever game in the NHL. He was on our show yesterday. Connor Bedard and the Chicago Blackhawks oh, yeah. traveled to Pittsburgh to get their asses beat by the Pittsburgh Penguins what? and Iceberg roaming yeah. around. Place going to be a sellout. It's going to be bananas. We're excited for hockey season, but mostly football is happening as well. The Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. One half of the Hammer, Dang. Cowboys Town Diggs is here. Tip of the cap to you as well, sir. And nine-year NFL vet, host of the Man to Man podcast, everything DB and NFL matchups, Darius J. Butler is yeah, here. Baby, D -Bot. D -Bot. Okay, D-Bot, we'll dive into the hockey, obviously, <laughs> in a little bit uh, of time here on this glorious Tuesday. We have Aaron Rodgers joining us. We'll feel the beat in about 18 minutes or so because there's some notable news coming from stories uh, that we didn't really forecast happening this early in the season. For instance, we'll go to Minnesota. Uh, oh. Justin Jefferson been put on IR. Mm -hmm. They're one in five right now. Oh. He goes on IR for four weeks. What if they're even worse? Yeah. They're talking about, do you bring them back then for the last mm -hmm. half of the season whenever you're not really playing for anything? Who knows who's his quarterback next year? What's the scene? This is a vastly different year than it was last year for Minnesota, and this is a more problematic situation for the Vikings who have already had a ton of those to begin with. So we'll visit there. How about we'll go down to Miami oh. because an injury just popped up out of nowhere yeah. to a guy that is kind of taking the NFL by storm. There are stats coming out that Devon – a Chan, mm -hmm. yep. running back for the Miami Dolphins, formerly of Texas A&M, and his rookie season is breaking records that people haven't had in 30, 40 years. Well, he's out with a knee injury. We'll Ooh. talk to Miami uh, beat reporter, and then obviously we'll travel to Pittsburgh <laughs> to talk to Mark Caboli because anytime you can squeeze Mark Caboli onto a show that is a national show, you're going to do that if you've ever seen Mark Caboli operate. It'll be worth it around 1230 Eastern time. Aaron Rodgers will join us, and then Rich Paul, the author of Lucky Me, Ooh. a memoir of changing the odds, will join us in the third hour. He's been on every show. Yes. yes. And the reason why is because he does business with everybody. He owns the Clutch Agency, which has done over $4 billion in deals. Sheesh. Okay? They're everywhere. They run the NBA. Yep. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he, he and LeBron are very tight since he was 21 years old and LeBron was in high school. They met each other uh, at an airport because of a uh, Warren Moon jersey. Yep. And then Rich Paul was selling jerseys out of his trunk of his car at the time in Cleveland. And he and LeBron become kin. And then all of a sudden, boom, 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 now they're taking over the entire world. And they have football age, uh, players all over the place. Jalen Hurts is in there. Yep. Miles Garrett is in there. Yep. Matthew Judon is mm -hmm. in there. Quinn and Williams. Ooh, uh, damn. Couple couple big name guys who, who also just got massive contracts very recently here. Yeah, so we're about to talk to one of the greatest hustlers in the history. This guy went from selling jerseys out of his trunk to moving every single deal in the NFL and the NBA, and also 
He's dating Adele. That's Whoa. Right. That's right. Pretty sweet. Huh? That was a big deal. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Adele's still selling out arenas wherever uh, she wants. Oh, Her yeah. and Rich sit next to each other. Oh, I don't know. There's three, four billion dollars just kind of sitting there. What a power couple. What a life. We can't wait to chat with him. He has 22 rules. Okay. Oh. Of creating your, how to create your own luck. I like nice. that. Let That's me get it. rule number seven. What a lot seven. of rules. Rule number seven, uh, study your craft. Okay, like you think that'd be a little rules. bit higher up in there, yeah. and it probably does apply to a couple of these other ones. Uh, like leave nothing to chance is rule number three. Okay. Oh. That probably, study your craft probably kind of in there huh. as well. You know, so I, feel like, I, I feel like a lot of these rules potentially, like rule number one, take care of your people. Okay. Love that. God, take care of your that. people. Because if not, people turn on you. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the enemy is always within your own camp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People forget about that whenever people. they're making decisions, people I think. Mm -hmm. uh, rule number two, other people are your business. Okay. Oh. Huh. That's interesting. That's rule number two. Okay. Rule number three, never leave nothing to chance. Rule number four, iron your clothes. Well, yeah, you're going to rule me out of that one. Rule number five, discipline your approach. Rule number six, build an ecosystem of empathy. Rule number seven, study your craft. Rule number 22, have faith. You're built for more than you can see. Wow. Right? So we'll talk to Rich Ball in the third hour. Excited for that. Let's talk about the football game last night. So... Ty, we'll start with you because you are Green Bay Packers owner. Mm -hmm. This Jordan Love era was the Gunta Kuntz era. Yep. This is the team that Gunta Kuntz has created fully by himself. The head coach that he hired without any input from anybody on the team. Mm -hmm. The quarterback that he drafted while potentially pissing off the current quarterback of the yep. team. The backup running back that he drafted while the current running back was playing the best that he has. He was playing last night. You guys moved to 2-3 and three after a loss to the Raiders. What did you see from your team last night that makes you believe that this season is isn't just going to be a transition, rough one, learn about this new team era? Or do you think there's still a chance you can go? Uh, I definitely am not as optimistic as I was a couple weeks ago. Uh, but it is early, so I won't just, you know, kind of pile on Jordan Love because he, he did look like hammered dog shit last night. He looked very, very bad. I don't know if it's all his fault, though. They have no identity. They just don't. Like, you do they – they don't. They still don't have a guy that they can rely on when they absolutely need a first down. AJ Dillon looked a little better than he has all year. He went for I think what seventy six yards on twenty and rushes. a touchdown. And yeah, a touchdown. Yeah. big one. But it's the same almost thing. Four like, yards a carry. Yeah, almost. Yeah, almost. three point eight yards a carry. Tony. Okay, slow your roll there. But they just like they they look terrible in first halves. They they have a little bit of momentum and then their drives just stop. They scored three points in the first half and then they get a turnover to start. The second half, march right down the field, score a touchdown. It just, I don't know if it's play calling. Um, I, I don't know what it is because we talked about this all preseason and early in the season. Like, this team isn't built for Jordan Love to have everything on his shoulders and him have to win games by himself. And that's what it's been so far with how many injuries they've had. But you can't use that as an excuse either. This is the NFL. Guys get injured. Like, next man up does apply. Their defense played pretty well last night. But again, it wasn't like a, I mean, you could hear "Go Pack Go" ringing throughout the stadium, so it's not like it was like the a fans did their part. Exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's a fireman Ed was saying. Well, it mm. wasn't. It wasn't a hostile environment by any means. If you, if especially their defense, if you limit a team to 17 points, yeah. like most times, you should win that game. We talked about their offensive line. Crosby just wreck shop all night. The like, Condor. They're gonna need to figure out how to get that cleaned up. Awesome. I don't know if they will. But they nice just don't point. have an identity. That's like, I mean, in years past with Aaron, you knew exactly what you were getting. And with Favre, you knew exactly what you were getting. But they, they have no identity whatsoever, and it shows early. They just, like, they're they're undisciplined. They don't have a guy they can go to. And then in the end, it always falls on Jordan Love's shoulders, and he's not he's not prepared to do that yet. Well, it's fascinating because some guys, as rookies, and he's not a rookie. He's obviously in his yep. what, third year at this mm -hmm. point. Yep. Yeah. Third-year quarterback, but it is his first couple times. Fourth year? Fourth, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, is fourth, it really? Yeah. Fourth-year quarterback. Damn. First time really playing. So there's going to be some lumps for some quarterbacks. But if we look at what Brock Purdy – hey, <laughs> Brock Purdy. <laughs> Literally mm -hmm. since day one, those guys do exist. Now, yep. is that the perfect setup with Shanahan and is LaFleur the guy? That's a whole nother, yeah. right? That hasn't even been chatted about. Yeah, I don't want to like call for his job, but uh, same deal. When he got hired, I was like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you look at what he did in Tennessee. I think he had the 29th ranked offense when he was the OC in Tennessee and got the job in Green Bay. Personally, I don't love him, but it, I mean, it's early. Again, all the stuff with the defense too, him just kind of letting the defensive coordinator do whatever the hell he's wanted to when – They've been just piss poor uh, over and over again. But again, it's early. Hopefully they can turn it around. They got a bye week. They have a lot of shit they need to sort out. Third year for Love. Uh, Matt LaFleur is 47 and 19 as a head coach. Damn. And remember, there's a lot of people that are like, 
would be nice to just become a head coach and have Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback for sure. who can kind of make up for everything. But then towards the end, a lot of the Green Bay people got sick of Aaron Rodgers, mm -hmm. right? Now, for numerous reasons, uh, because of what took place between him and the front office, potentially because he went down to the jungle to try some tea that made him trip balls a little bit. Mm -hmm. For other reasons, you know. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. 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 There's a lot of stuff that happened and took place, and some people took the side of the Packers. Some people took the side of Aaron Rodgers, but nobody really took talked about the head coach how is he going to fare is he the right guy to lead a team without a veteran quarterback who can make up for everything we shall see but early indicators are going to do well but might not win this seems like a punt to next year but for the Raiders what a massive win yeah, at home on Monday Night Football you talk about Crosby yeah. obviously he was a game wrecker has been a game wrecker will be a game wrecker for his entirety of being in the NFL he's also petty and a little bit of a dirt ball yeah. on the field, yeah, love, which sure. I appreciate. They've talked about it in quarterback. Obviously, he and Ooh. Patrick Mahomes have that relationship. He flies around. We love him. But let's talk about the dump truck. <laughs> let's talk about yeah, Bob Spillane. Yeah, Bobby. Bob Spillane had two picks last night. And a lot of people might have been introduced to Bob Spillane last night on Monday Night Football. And they probably said to themselves, wow, I never heard of this guy. And he has a C on his chest. He must be a rookie. He's not a rookie. No. This dude got drafted in 2018, was with the Titans. Then he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers for a while. The last two years he was at the Steelers, it was just one-year contracts. Prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Prove yourself. You know how he proved himself whenever he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers? Derrick Henry and the Tennessee Titans marched down the field to a goal line type situation in Bob Spillane out of Oak Hills, Illinois, Western Michigan, backed up in the end zone so he could get more room and ran his face <laughs> yep. right into Derrick Henry's face so loud that the pop was captured yep. throughout the entire stadium. He might have knocked himself out. He knocked Derrick Henry out as well, but it was on that particular play where all Yinzers fell in love with this mm. guy. We had him on our show. This dude's neck is this big. Huge. It goes straight from top of ear yep. to outside shoulder. Yep. You're talking about an absolute dog. So whenever I saw him flying around last night, I thought that was Kwiatkowski out of West Virginia. Yeah. Who's this white linebacker playing. I see a C on his chest. Oh, that's dump truck Bob Spillane, yep. who after he got the ball in his hands last night with one of them, he knew what to do with it, oh, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This guy's a thumper. He's right. beloved in the locker room. Crosby talked about how the boys absolutely love him, and now he's making plays on the ball. Steelers missed out when they let the dump truck get out of town and go to Las Vegas. For sure. I mean, Bubby was never afraid to stick his nose in places that others did not want to go. Okay, oh, yeah. That's what he, he came. Yep. Here we go. Here's the play. Boom! Boom! That guy 41 flying in the side just knocked himself out. Who is it? Bob Spillane. Oh, That's the guy that got two picks last night. Yeah. He is an absolute animal. Wasn't a starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Came in in relief for some people that were injured, which is probably why he was never viewed as a starter or anything like that. He's got the C oh, over yeah. there, Huge. and he's all over the field. Happy for Bob. Happy for Crosby. But that Raiders team needed a win, needed. it feels like. Jimmy G didn't have his best game, but they win. That's yep. like a Jimmy G football game. Josh Jacobs started moving a little bit. Your thoughts on the Raiders after try, last night, D-Butt? Try to get it done. You saw they wanted to establish, try to establish the run game with Jacobs didn't get it really going but once again Jimmy G did a better job taking care of the ball in this mm -hmm. one and Joy loved it that's what it came down to and that first pick by far loves worse one I don't know if he just didn't see Spillane with the, with the dark, dark visor yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah a little camouflage yeah, yeah but, uh, threw it right at him uh the, the late one you know where he scrambled through it deep to Robinson that was a great play by him and then the other one we just saw was Spillane running to the ball with Peters on the bat down just got to take care of the ball once again around 50 percent completion rating Yep. Too low. You know, if you're throwing the ball 30 times, you want to at least complete 20, 22 of those. Um, so it just wasn't wasn't a good look all around, but a great job by the Raiders getting one get one at home with Jimmy G's return. Huge win. Raiders and Packers are both two and three now. I feel like there's a lot of teams that are sitting right there. Three and two is another one. But whenever you think about the Packers last night, and I fell asleep at this time. I'm, I apologize. I watched it this morning. But it was that an game, awful game. Was very buddy! After, yeah. Buddy! Awful. Buddy! Especially oh. after last, oh. Sunday night when you watched the Niners. Buddy! Yeah. Last night was a snoozer, okay? I mean, that's putting it light. And they didn't even put Chris Angel dangling from the sky out there. It's Vegas. Why I not? need Chris Angel dangling from the Legion Stadium every single time they're on primetime. If you're going to go to Vegas, I don't see Carrot Top doing his little sh no. What are we doing? The Come Golden on. Knights were there with the with Lord Stanley's Cup, but outside of that, nothing. I did see Stoner lifting that thing up for the boys. Oh, yeah. Golden and I knew right, right when I saw that, I was like, oh, boy, Packers are in trouble. Hey, Golden Knights got a game tonight, too, huh? Yeah, we do. Banners dropping. So it should be a pretty special night. Um, 
Um, I'm very excited. That's that's a late puck drop, though. Yeah, 1030, I believe, Eastern. <laughs> yeah. You know why? Because you need Sidney Crosby yeah. at 8. Need Sidney Crosby at prime. Yeah, I get it. Need Connor the Bedard on the ice at 8 p.m. 530? Oh, yeah. It's opening night, Tony. I don't know if anybody's going to watch that one. Outside Nashville <laughs> and Tampa, I'm not 100% sure anybody's going to tune into that. Hopefully some people will. Uh, but that 8 o'clock game, if you're not an NHL fan, that's the game to watch. Try it. Okay, there's OGs on the one side mm -hmm. that have been doing it for a lot. How many years? 18 years, I think is what they thought. 18 years, and then they just added Eric Carlson this offseason. That's four Hall of Famers playing on one team. And then on the other side, you'll see him. He's going to be very fast. Yeah. His dangles are going to be insane. And allegedly, he's got a little snapper that is lethal. Best shot in the NHL. They're saying, if you're new to hockey, don't know the hockey, tonight's a good one. Like, okay, do I want to roll with the OGs? Or, holy hell, this new shiny toy is probably going to be here for the next 15, 20 years. That's how hockey is, too, by the way. McJesus, Sidney Crosby, and this kid, they've kind of been primed for the NHL. And it's Sidney's been playing... 18 years just yeah. all the way through. Nuts. McJesus will play the – like, hockey's different than other sports. These dudes break legs, break arms, and they say it's either an upper body or lower body, <laughs> and then you don't find out about what it actually is for four to five months. Old school sport, dogs, a lot of action, too many damn games, though. Oh, which yeah. a lot of, some a lot people of will find a way to – you know, use that as a way to lose interest. But tonight's a great start to find a team if you're not an NHL fan. I believe it said Connor Bedard was 20 days old when Sidney Crosby made his debut. So, you know, crazy that those guys – I mean, it is nuts Move. how long Sid's been in the league. So, I mean, I, I'm very excited. Like you said, you know, not being like a massive hockey fan, if I'm not watching the Golden Knights, I will definitely be tuning into that one. And then falling asleep in the middle of it like I did. But if you get to the, uh, last night's game, if you go to the end of that, Jordan Love had a chance to win this thing. He did. Oh, yeah. So Jordan Love, at the very end of the game, he throws a pick. And obviously we've shown that. The whole world has shown that. But pause it. It is 48 seconds left, 17-13. Packers still have a timeout. OK, so right now you could still work the middle of the field. This is not desperation situation. They could have done a lot of things. Him forcing this ball to Christian Watson. Now, granted, that's an incredible pick. The dude literally elevated and levitated to make that thing happen. And in slow mo, it looks even more ridiculous because eyes, eyes, jump, float, catch on shoulder, Ooh. game over. Yeah, what man. a play. People are saying Jordan Love's ball wasn't good. It's like that coverage right there is bananas. I think the ball wasn't good because there's no reason to be that desperate. We still got a timeout. We still got another play after this. We don't have to go for it right now. Even though on a sideline, allegedly, uh, LaFleur was pointing and jumping <laughs> mm -hmm. to throw the ball to Christian Watson. Well, Christian Watson also had his hand up. If you're going to throw your hand up like that, you better come back and try to make a play on the ball a little better now. Well, they're running 23 yeah, miles yeah. an hour. He wanted, he, wanted, he wanted out then. If you'll see that play again, uh, it's not always good Love kind of got pressured. So he had to step up, put in his left hand, then – Step up in the throwing pot. So right here, if he didn't have to do that, this is it's probably a walk-in touchdown. touchdown. He that's could also ran recovery. for four yards yeah, there, yeah. five yeah. yards there. I mean, there's just – that's the type Got of – Got to go right there. I mean, just – A little late. Yeah. Got to go. Uh, he did get kind of – what kind of push-off by Robertson now that we're – you know, yeah. now we're talking about the DBs just cheating out there. Yeah, well, always, well, that's what always, always. DBs just cheating. absolutely cheating Fair out game. there. I mean, that's just – but anyway, still in it. Still had a chance to win it until the very end. feel like there's going to be a lot of that. This year with the Packers. I think so. And that and the thing with Watson, too, I mean, he's been hurt, but they, they kind of fall back on because he's a burner and because he's so physical. Like, they need to find ways to get him the ball other than just like, hey, we need you to run as deep as you can. And, and hopefully Love can lob one up there and we either get a P.I. or you catch one for a, for a touchdown. Like, they need to find ways to get him involved other than those type of plays. He does have jets, though. He does yeah, have it is jets. Fun to it must be fun to run. Like, there's a couple guys around the league that seem seem to be faster than everybody else yeah. around there. Like, Deshaun Jackson experienced it for, oh, like, 15 oh, God, years. Man. That must be so much fun to be oh, those guys. God. Just cruising around. Like Breaking a speed limit in a school zone, mm -hmm. just yep. running their asses off, pulling away from professional athletes. Good for them. How do you get them involved in it, though? How do you make him more of a weapon? How do you uh, utilize A.J. Dillon to his best strengths? You know, how do you get him rolling out yeah. there? Need Aaron Jones back, period. That's kind of like he, he is the thing that makes this team go. So hopefully he'll get healthy after this bye week and needs to stay healthy because they really need him. All right, let's pivot away from there. Let's talk about what everybody loves to talk about all the time, Dallas Cowboys. Hell right? yeah. I was on first take this morning with Stephen A., Unk, and Molly, and I was asked about if this year goes how we all seemingly think the Dallas Cowboys year is going to go. Go. Is Dak's time up 
for the Dallas Cowboys. And I just brought out a matter of a fact that the contract, the way it is written, it's basically impossible for the Dallas Cowboys to get out from the Dak Prescott contract after this season. A $61 million yep. <laughs> dead cap. It. That is just cutting the entire salary cap into a third pretty much and saying you can't use this for anybody. You don't even get a player from this. You're just going to sacrifice this. There's no way Jerry Jones would do that. Is Dak Prescott's deal tradable? <laughs> mm. I do not think so, but even if they did trade him, $61 million dead cap hit for the Dallas Cowboys. He has a no trade clause. He has a no tag clause. So the fact of the matter is he will be a Dallas Cowboy next year for the Dallas Cowboys. Here's Jerry Jones talking this morning on his interview, or on his radio show that he does every single week about Dak and whether or not Dak is the guy for them. No, the results are very obvious. We haven't won a Super Bowl. Uh, we've had good – would you agree that we've had good games over yes, the years? absolutely. Okay. And we've had some bad games. Do you know any team that hasn't had that happen to them? Yes. Nope. Now, consequently, I will say that we haven't gotten our big years when we should have. We've been real close a few times and haven't gotten our big years. Uh, those That's not excuses. That's not anything. But if you think for one minute that there's any particular thing that I could put my f- finger on that basically says we need to do that differently, we need to do that differently, uh, that then it's combinations of things. Uh, Dak Prescott is a quarterback that can get us to the Super Bowl, and uh, uh, that's uh, that, that's the way that's going to be. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, we have uh, other quarterbacks on that roster, yeah, yeah. and uh, and, and uh, uh, players that uh, certainly, if that something should steps. happen to Dak, but I want to be real clear. Uh, yeah. Dak's very capable of making this team be where we want it to go. I want to be real clear. Mm-hmm. It'll cost us $61 million. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Okay, so he is more than capable to do yep. everything we're all dreaming of. Mm-hmm. So stop asking. And yes, I would like to see us do a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> but has there been any team, he said, has yeah. there been any team that hasn't gotten embarrassed like this over the time? I know we don't have a Super Bowl, but this happens to everybody. Yeah. I love the way Jerry sticks up for his guy here. I Absolutely. love the way Jerry is painting the image. And I love the fact that Jerry knows he's stuck with oh. that, whether <laughs> yep. he likes it or not. He was also asked in that interview about having uh, Shoddy, Schottenheimer call plays as opposed to Mike, and he said nope, not at all, because remember, Mike took over because Kellen Moore was trying to run up the scoreboard. The Dallas Cowboys yep. conversation continues to be broad, and we will continue to have it, because it is fascinating. Yeah. Got a Yinzer down there at head coach, <laughs> who I feel like he's probably the one that's going to be for and sure. Dak is going to be the one that will survive. That's how the contract states. Now, it is time for us to dig a little bit deeper. Huh? It is time for us to not be this zoomed out 30,000-foot view sports program. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Not Stooges anymore. No, no. Let's dive into the weeds a little bit. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to feel the You see, we're feeling it. Yeah, I was kind of feeling it because we haven't felt the beat in a while. So we will feel the beat by going to beat writers for each team to see what the feel is with boots on the ground. Let's go to Minnesota with ESPN NFL Nation reporter Kevin Seifer. Kevin, thank you for joining us, pal. Thanks for having me, Pat. I wish I could do that dance. I'm not that good. Well, you don't have to feel the beat. You just got to know the news. And we appreciate you joining us with all that type of information. Let's dive right in. Justin Jefferson goes to IR. This is Heartbreak City, especially with where the Vikings are right now. Schefter kind of put out a tweet that was kind of like, we'll see where the Vikings are when Justin Jefferson comes back. What is the thought for this season with Justin Jefferson? And is there a world where four weeks from now, if the Vikings season is dead, we just kind of mail it in with Justin Jefferson so we don't risk another injury with him for the rest of the year? I don't think it'll be that dramatic. I think, you know, first of all, the four weeks is simply just because you have to spend four weeks on, on IR if you get put on IR. I think the injury itself is significant enough that there's some concern that even at week five, he's not going to be ready. Um, and then you get into the contract thing. He, basically, what I take from that and what my understanding is, is that he won't feel rushed to get back. 
Uh, and the Vikings aren't going to rush him back either. Uh, a player at that position with a hamstring strain of the significance that he apparently has is not going to be that effective. So I do not think this is going to be a season-ending thing. I don't think he's going to stage a hold-in uh, from everything I can understand. But I also know that they're not. he's not going to rush to get back at 70% or 80% because I don't think – that would make sense for anyone. Yeah, especially if you guys are one and eight or one and seven. What are the vibes over there with the football gods seemingly not blessing the Vikings at all this year versus last year blessing them every single time they had an opportunity to be blessed? I mean, it's almost like the pendulum has just swung the other way. They got every loose ball last year. They got every uh, fortunate break. Uh, if you're a big analytics guy, they were one of the biggest, the, the luckiest teams in the NFL last year. And this wow. year, they're one of the unluckiest. They're fumbling. They're not recovering them. Uh, they're they're throwing passes that should be a touchdown and it's going off people's hands for interceptions or vice versa. And so I think the vibe is a little shell-shocked. I think they probably thought last year that they had a system and a culture in place that could avoid those sort of unlucky things. And I think what they found out is that uh, it happens to everybody. Well, rule number 19 of uh, creating your own luck from Rich Paul is your worst experience can be your best credential. This year feels like the worst experience that they could potentially yeah. have. Connor has a question for you, Kevin. Yeah, Kev, what's the yes, deal sir. with Kirk Cousins? Obviously, he has a no-trade clause, so if he were to be traded, he'd have to approve it. Uh, I see some people on the X saying that they want to sign Kirk Cousins for 10 years. I see some people that want him out of the building. What do you think is going to happen? And do you actually believe that Kirk Cousins will be the Minnesota Vikings quarterback this time next season uh you know initially at the start of the season i thought there was a pretty good chance of that but the way this has started i mean they're gonna have to ask themselves the question does it make sense to bring back what would be a 36 year old starting quarterback to a team that didn't make the the playoffs and is gonna have to assuming they want to sign justin jefferson they're gonna have to pay him quarterback money as well and, and they have plenty of other holes to fill and so i think that the chances of him returning next year are seeming less and less likely as far as whether they trade him uh, you know, I, as you said, the no trade clause is there, and 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 he wanted that there for a reason. I think he is Kirk Cousins has always been someone who felt very motivated to be able to control every movement that he made career wise, and he's been able to do that throughout through the years with the franchise tag in Washington, and 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 all the way into free agency, and so. Uh, you know, I think you also get into a: is there anybody who really wants to acquire him for a very short period of time? Uh, and I don't know if that's the case or not. Obviously, the Jets are out there, but if I don't think that he is going to be likely to want to move. Uh, we'll see if there's somebody can make it worth his while. But it doesn't feel like it's something. Just knowing him and his personality and the way he likes to feel grounded and in control, I don't know that a midseason trade uh, would seem the likeliest scenario right now. Especially with how nice his house is out there. Oh, we yeah. saw it on yep. quarterback, you know what I mean? Hey, Kevin, we appreciate you so much. We hope things turn around there so you can live a happier life, too. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Seifert. Thank hey, you, buddy. Hey, Kevin! All right, that's Minnesota with the Justin Jefferson news. Going to IR, has to go to IR for four weeks, obviously, but they put him on IR for a reason. You know, he said, well, the only reason why it's four weeks is because IR. It's like, we know that, but that was a decision yeah. that had to be made. Could have been a yeah. one- to two-week type thing. Mm -hmm. Didn't even think about the hold-in. I was thinking from the Vikings' standpoint, them saying, hey, we got no... We got nothing to play for. Because if it ends up one and eight, whenever they're done, I don't know when their bye week is, another four weeks after this. If they end up at that, it's like all stats from the history say this team is not going to do anything. Yeah. yeah. This guy's your best player. I guess with no deal done, would they still want him to play? I don't. That'll be something we got to monitor because you never want to rest, especially as professional athletes. Did they put out like the, the grade or tear or whatever? Because I they, they, straight they put them on the quick. Yeah. Straight like this. That fast, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was real quick. Not like a second opinion. But him or... saying uh, he, he might not be in any rush to get back either because of that contract. It was not surprising. Yeah, yeah. at all, especially with the record that they're at. If yeah. their team was good sure. and that right. was happening, then super heel move. Like, sure. What are we doing? Yeah. But since he's come in and been the guy mm -hmm. that – and also he – other wide receivers drafted before him. Mm -hmm. So he is not – like, everybody sees him now. They're like, yeah, he's the best. It was easy. It was like, nah, a lot of people missed yeah. on not drafting Justin Jefferson. Yeah. And then as soon as he gets there, he becomes the guy. If your team's already out and there's a contract, like generational wealth-changing contract Huge coming, one. we could understand, I think, that decision. I'm sure Vikings fans will not be happy, though, that paid for season tickets. And they're like, oh, why don't hey. we yeah. – we're one and eight. Yeah. It's four degrees outside. <laughs> we, can't, we, we got the best guy on our team on the sideline. Ladies and gentlemen, once again – it's time to feel the beat.
Dang. I was really feeling it. Nah. That was pretty good. good I was beat. really feeling it. Yeah. That was a good beat. It's time to dive into the weeds even more. Let's go down to Miami with Marcel Louis Jacques of ESPN NFL Nation. Hell yeah. Oui. I'm doing my own my own round of applause. You nailed that pronunciation, man. Oui, oui, bonjour, ça va. <laughs> you got me there, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was All right. the I, I, thought I wasn't gonna, prepared for the follow-up. <laughs> I thought we were going to roll. Thank you for joining us and making time on this Feel the Beat segment where we're trying to get smarter and not be as wide and broad view on things happening around the NFL. Let's talk about it. A-Chan, which we learned that is the pronunciation of his name a couple weeks ago from Schefter. A-Chan comes into the NFL and boom, this dude's like one of the greatest running backs statistically that has ever come into the league. Now, knee injury, second opinion coming. That came out of nowhere. How come we didn't hear about this seemingly on Sunday or even late into Monday, what is going to happen with him? And this is a bummer, right? Everybody in Miami is feeling this. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Like, this is probably the most exciting offensive rookie in the NFL right now. I know the hype surrounded Bijan Robinson, and he's been very good. Devon Hitchens really played three games, three meaningful games. He's already second in the NFL in rushing yards behind Christian McCaffrey. He's second in rushing touchdowns behind McCaffrey. And his teammate, Raheem Mostert. So there is some hope that, you know, they could maintain a certain level of offensive production here. But we didn't hear about it on Sunday because they weren't really sure about it on Sunday. He, McDaniel, when we spoke to him on Monday, said that H.A. told them, you know, he might be dealing with something, but he wanted to tough it out. And it was one of those scenarios where they didn't know exactly how serious it was. Come Monday, though, McDaniel was playing it super coy about how serious this injury was. Wouldn't even answer whether or not he was getting an MRI done. So didn't even want to just put that into the world, what the testing was, and said that it would be, you know, kind of naive to put any sort of timeline on it. And with oh. Mike, like, I've, I've covered Mike for about a year, year and a half now. He's tough to read sometimes, like, when he plays a coy like this. It could really be either way. This could either be a lot more serious than he's making it seem, or it could be no big deal. And I think as we just saw... It was a little bit more serious than he was making it seem. It feels like, so what is, uh, like, guesstimation here for him? Because we, we got a great backfield still, right? Nothing as explosive, seemingly, as what A-Chan has been, because I don't know if there is anybody yeah. at this stage that's as explosive as A-Chan. But Mostert, you said he's lead. I think Jeff's coming back off IR as well, right? Yeah, I just I got to talk to Jeff Wilson in the locker room a couple weeks ago. It was actually after the Denver game when he still had two weeks remaining on IR. He said that he was going to be ready to go. His agent, Drew Rosenhaus, went on local TV here. He said that the Dolphins will be ready to activate him when the time comes. And even McDaniel said, like, this is something that they want to further evaluate as information comes in. So I would expect to see him at practice when we're at the facility uh, tomorrow on Wednesday. Uh, but as far as just the timeline of how long HM is going to be out, man, it's tough to say, but I will say that if they put him on IR this week, he's going to miss the next four games. That is uh, Carolina this week. Five. That's Philly next week. Oh, that man. is New England at home the week after. And then Kansas City in Germany, which that's a shame. The international crowd is going to have to miss Devon A. Champ's performance against that. You know, that would have been a shootout. But uh, then their bye week is right after that Kansas City game. Right. So the soonest that he'd be able to come back is week 11. That gives him that extra week you know, to heal up. So it might be a realistic option here if they feel like it's going to be a several-week injury. Yeah, with those young guys, too, they might heal quick, you know what I mean? And what, what he's been able to do, how long do you want him out, especially at the running back position where he have to feel his way back in there? Or who, will he be able to just drop in for the most important part of the season? He's been phenomenal to watch. We assume McDaniel will figure it out, though. Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Marcel, there's another big name who, who's been out the last couple of weeks in, in Jalen Phillips, and, and obviously you already have Ramsey and Armstead out, and now A-Chan, and then Phillips is dealing. What is the current situation with him because you can tell they've missed him a little bit as getting to the quarterback especially into that bills game <laughs> yeah man i actually just saw uh well okay jalen phillips this, he's been out for a couple weeks with an oblique injury he's been limited at practice throughout the past few weeks i would expect he makes his return against carolina but it's super early in the week to say that for sure i think we got to value or evaluate what he looks like at practice tomorrow and thursday and then we'll get a real estimation there on Friday, but you know, it's a guy where this isn't the, wasn't a situation where they wanted to put him on IR. It wasn't a situation where they felt like it was going to keep him out for a month or so. I think, like I said, I would expect for him to make this return. Uh, what we've seen from them this year is they played it very cautious with injuries. You know, they played it cautious with Teron Armstead. They're playing it cautious with Jalen Phillips and Connor Williams a couple weeks ago. Like it's a scenario where they got, they got the whole picture, the big picture in mind, right? Like it's not about September and October. It's about December in January, but Jalen Ramsey, I will say, I was in the tunnel uh, directly after the game on Sunday. 
I saw Jalen Ramsey running from the field to the locker room. Oh. It wasn't, you know, dead sprint, 40-yard dash. <laughs> but he was running. He was legitimately running. We asked McDaniel about it yesterday. He said he was alerted about our tweets. He was alerted about our observations. But uh, So somebody snitched down there. But you know, he said that he's on the positive side of recovery. That's great news for the Dolphins. He doesn't have any brace on. I haven't seen him with any sort of sleeve, brace, crutches since August at this point. He's always said he's going to beat the timeline. I've seen nothing to refute that claim. Feels like somehow some of these humans are able to do that with yeah. stuff. Aaron was walking like four days after an Achilles surgery. Yeah. <laughs> you got Jalen running. You said not a sprint, but transferring weight. Pretty good. Yeah, and you know, I mean, he plays corner, right? So you, you got to be able to backpedal, change directions, cut on, stop on a dot. Like, it's more than just sprinting. Talk Don't get shit. me wrong. Yeah. Be able to do uh, that. But I mean, sure. running is better than not running, right? Yeah, go ahead, Derek. Yeah, Marcel, what is that timeline for Jalen? Is it still December or are they thinking uh, November? Like, what is that timeline for Jalen Ramsey? So, like, the, the, the loose timeline has always been that December, you know, mid-December area. Gotcha. But, uh, again, he wants to beat it. So, he wants to be back, you know, in theory, late November, maybe. Like, it's hard to attach. Like, they haven't publicly attached a timeline to this, and they do that on purpose so that there's no – disappointment when expectations are not met. I think they learned that lesson with Byron Jones last year. You know, he was supposed to be ready for training camp. He didn't play at all. Yeah. So I, it's not something that this regime does. But I think, you know, best case scenario, we're talking, you know, mid to late November. Best case scenario. Let's stay on the defensive side of the ball with two last things here. Vic Fangio's defense, more beloved in Miami now after we're just – Boat racing everybody. Because there at the beginning, right, I think people were saying, this guy forgot how to call D. Yeah. This yeah. guy's defense is terrible. We're in a good spot with the Vic Fangio defense or no? Yeah, I mean, let's not overreact to beating up the New York Giants. That team was devoid of any offensive talent on Sunday. Like, let's, let's, let's chill out. Let's <laughs> not overreact. I mean, they hung up 70 on the Denver Broncos, but that offense still moved the ball pretty well against them. Uh, you know, it, it's a scenario where – in years past, we've seen them dominate on just one side of the ball. Like last year, it was all offense and no defense. Two years ago, all defense, no offense. This is probably the most balanced that this team has been since. It's not a situation where this defense is a liability. I think they can take the ball away. They can keep them in games. They can keep games within reach if need be. But in our reality, they just have to protect a lead that this offense is inevitably going to give them. Yeah, it's unbelievable to watch the offense. And I think uh, the greatest show on turf or whatever was compared to them and then times at a 10 or something like yeah. that yeah. is what a coach said about this current Dolphins offense. Let's stick on a defense, though. Going into the season, Christian Wilkins was holding like a hold in for a new contract, and then it didn't happen. He said, well, shit, all right, good <laughs> effort. And then he just played. He's been playing. Is there any news on that front? And is Christian Wilkins like the coolest dude of all time? <laughs> <laughs> Christian is Christian is funny. He, Christian is very funny. I actually used to cover him uh, dating back to his Clemson days as well. So very familiar with his tactics. He's somebody who usually if, if somebody says he did something on the field, he, he probably did that. He probably did that. But uh, oh, you're talking about when he was uh, huh. you're talking about when he was uh, <laughs> he uh, and then he does a little <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> I didn't say anything. You, yo, you're saying stuff, not me. You're saying stuff, not me. But yes, good no, teammate is what. But hey. Good teammate, good leader. I mean, you mentioned the hold in. We've seen it from how many people this offseason when they want a new contract, they bounce. They said, I'll eat the fine. Like, I'm not going. This wasn't financially motivated in terms of he didn't want to be fine. He wanted to show that he's still a member of this team. He just wants what he feels like he's worth. You know, from my understanding, he had a offer in. It was a fair offer from the Dolphins standpoint. I don't have the exact dollar amount, but I know it's in the ballpark of $20 million a year in average annual value. Uh, you know, Maybe he wanted more, wanted more guarantees. Doesn't matter. Either way, they weren't able to come to an agreement. This is not something that they're going to negotiate in season. This is something that they're tabling until the end of the season. Unfortunately, though, you, then you're going to have this, a situation where you either got franchise tag him or you have to risk, you know, another team offering him a stupendous bag and losing him, losing one of your team captains. But they did pay Zach Sealer. Uh, you know, they will have to figure out what to do with Raekwon Davis. He's more of a nose tackle than, you know, a three tech like. Wilkins and Sealer are, but, uh, you know, there might be some movement on that defensive line come this offseason. That's something way in the distance that Miami and Miami fans are going to have to deal with in a few months. Is Tua still doing jujitsu? <laughs> as far as I know, Tua, does, uh, Tua is not doing it in season. Oh, no. Well, we thought maybe he was working towards his best jujitsu towards <laughs> the end of the season. Arm bar, late yeah. in December. 
Come on. I don't like uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've seen it out of him, though. Like, there haven't been any crazy hits. You know, he's man. He's played so much smarter. It's not, you know, him, you know, holding on the ball too long. If he has to get rid of it, he get rid of it, tucks and rolls, gets out of uh, any disadvantageous situation. Like, this is something where he didn't love calling attention to it throughout the offseason because he wants to make sure – it works. He didn't want it to be this big hype train. And then all of a sudden, something Everybody's didn't talking work. About well, it. We don't even know. Everybody's talking about it. Was they shut up? No, we don't the hype even... train has left the station. Man. Oh, the yeah. hype train has left the station. It is what it is. But by all accounts, it looks like it's working on the field. This is something that the Dolphins have implemented into their quarterback room. Everybody in that room has been trained in some capacity by the trainers who taught to a not authorized to use They're their names yet. Maybe out. in a few months when he gets out the season unscathed, we could finally reveal who they were. All right. To every every missed every missed throw. Okay. You gotta roll with everybody yeah. for one minute. That's right. Up against the wall, working on the whole thing. That's awesome. We love Tua so much. We, yep. Happy right, it's well, working we gotta out. See. For, go ahead. I say what well, we gotta see. We gotta see the sparring match between yeah. Tua and Teron Armstead. Teron Armstead, boxer in the offseason. He said he'll whoop to his ass. So I don't I don't know. <laughs> We don't we'll want to drive a wedge, Marcel. Uh, we appreciate you so much. Marcel Louis Jacques, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Marcel. Took French for a long time. Yeah. Nice. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. Don't need a word bank, though. Sure. Tough language. You know, like when they speak, I can understand it a little bit. Only took French because the French teacher was a very beautiful lady whenever we were 15 years old. Sure. And we thought she liked us as people. So nice. we thought there was a chance we'd just kind of skirt mm -hmm. through. That was not the case. Yep. Like once we became students of hers, she did not. She was not. Mademoiselle was not the biggest fan. <laughs> no she was not the biggest fan of mine. I thought we had a. I thought we had a really good opportunity. But it did serve me well. One time, I was in Morocco, mm. and their second language is French. And I was walking through, and I heard a group. They were talking about us, me specifically, and I could hear them, but I couldn't figure out how to say. Like, je comprends. I couldn't figure out the words to say yeah. back. So I said, no, no. And then I just kept walking. Right. But every once in a while, it pays off. I look super cultured with a gentleman whose name is Marcel Louis Jacques. Obviously. You know, we, oui, we. Oui. Yeah, he did not speak French. Drop no. bonjour, ça va. Nothing yeah. on the way back. Mm -hmm. That's True. great news for us. We look smart there. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Okay. That doesn't happen a lot. No, never. Look at us doing it. I know the pronunciation. A lot. So he, yeah, but he was yeah. good. Oh, yeah. Very yeah. good. I really enjoyed him on the program. Absolutely. Yeah. Just like Kevin. And then. Ladies and gentlemen, for the final time today, yeah. we're going back to the hometown of Pittsburgh. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to feel the beat. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, let's stop with the horse and run. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't need to feel the beat too much right there. No, no. Because no. we're holding up somebody coming on the show that's electrifying, intelligent, and always in the know. Ladies and gentlemen from The Athletic, beat reporter for the Steelers, Mark Caboli. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. How you doing? Nice sweater there, Pat. Hey, thanks. Big night tonight. How do we feel? Team uh, vibes high back there in Pittsburgh? We got a squad, four Hall of Famers basically playing every single night for the Pens. That's good news, right, Mark? Yeah, I mean, they're about all 39 years old, but hey. Uh oh, Mark. Me, I guess. tell him, Mark. Mark, tell open Mark. your eyes. <laughs> you got a chance to watch greatness. We don't need to talk about how old they are. Jeez. Sydney's fighting people in preseason already. He's ready to go. He's feeling younger than ever. I seen it. I watched it with my eyes when I had him open. Watch it. You need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's I'll open my eyes. Let's and, dive uh, into the Steelers, though, here, Mark. Okay, let's do this. I um, fire Canada chance have rang through Akersher Stadium numerous times this season. Yeah. I know you're probably in the building right now. It's an uncomfortable <laughs> thing that everybody's talking about. Tomlin is a very loyal coach, always has been, always will be. Does this feel louder, though, than anything else? Because even after a Ravens win, Steelers fans are like, well, it's not because of the offense. That Nobody's saying anything good about the OC. Has Tomlin heard that? And do you expect anything before the end of this season to change? First of all, I am inside the Steelers facility. They always have your show on, and they're going to be coming off the field here in a couple minutes. So what am I going to say? I'm hoping they're still on, on the field because, um, you know, i got to go in that locker room in a little bit. But, uh, yeah, not too many people like Matt Canada in the city right now. Probably the most hated person in the city, which is, you know, it's, it's sad to say. It's a guy trying to do his job. 
but it just hasn't produced results whatsoever. Okay. I think the worst thing that happened was that preseason – put together five drives of 17 total plays, five touchdowns, and they look like world beaters. And all of a sudden they resort back to what they look like right now. I just don't see Mike Tomlin making a change. We're at the bye week right now. I think you look at last year, guys, they were two and six at the bye week, and they end up going seven and two. I believe Tomlin feels that that's still the best way to go right now. So everybody who's out there is firing Matt Canada, Chance, We'll probably keep saying it until probably January. Okay, so we got a long time. Everybody's found the rhythm of it, though. The last Fire Matt Canada chant, uh, Fire Canada chant, was very much in sync from the beginning. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the first time, it was like, Fire, 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 Anada, Fire. Like everybody kind of off. Right. This time, the whole city of Pittsburgh is like, Yep, in unison, team. Yeah. Fire Canada! <laughs> it's like right on board. It's almost becoming a thing. Like, you know, let's go Steelers chants yep. get started everywhere. It's almost like the Fire Canada chants are getting started everywhere in Pittsburgh. But after the bye week, a little self-eval. Yinzers will give him a chance. Yeah. Let's talk about the other side of the ball. Ty has a question for you, Kaboli. Yeah, Mark, something uh, that Steelers fans are also pissed about mm -hmm. is the lack of burn for both Broderick Jones and Joey Porter Jr. Uh, Joey Porter Jr. obviously had a massive interception in the Ravens win is there any chance moving forward that we're going to see those guys on the field a little bit more considering they are their two uh top draft picks from this past year yeah well i mean start with joey porter he uh got put into the starting lineup in the second half against the ravens um pretty much the only base defense he's played all year so he you you can anticipate him finally taking that job over it's a question of who he takes it from I'm guessing right now Pat Peterson will be moved inside to be some sort of a rover, some sort of a, uh, a nickel slot type of back right now. So I think moving forward, they've always had that thought of Peterson playing multiple positions, but they didn't have that outside corner that they felt comfortable with. And Porter got hurt early in camp, set him back a little bit. But I think moving forward, he's pretty much is going to be out there for the goodness. Uh, as for Broderick Jones, I don't know. Uh, he played well the other day against the Ravens, but Dan Moore was coming off a injury here. I'm not quite sure what they're going to do there. Um, they wanted to bring him along slow too as well because, you know, he's the guy that didn't play a lot in college. I mean, he played at a high level, but not a lot. But if he has another good game here in two weeks, Dan Moore is there. I think the whole thought was just to bring him along slowly. And once he gets in there, He'll stay in there, so uh, yeah. it's a question. Dan Moore goes to the right side, left side, or on the bench right now. But I think you're getting your wish. I think the two rookies will be starting probably from here on out. Here we go. That's what I want to say. You point there. Because that defense is awesome. Yes. So if you're able to replenish with young guys, I think the entire city of Pittsburgh goes, okay, we got this defense for the next 15 years still. It's a staple of the city of Pittsburgh. It's carrying the Steelers currently and has carried the Steelers for like the last 10 years. I think that's why Yinzers are so pissed at Old Canada. Diggs has a question for you, Kabul. Yeah, Mark, another thing they're pissed about um, besides everything. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but... Totally Why'd you say they? Yeah. They means you, right? It yes. Go mm -hmm. This is Turn Diggs it and does. Turn Diggs' group text. Yeah. Exactly. Another thing we are pissed about. I don't know if you know this. Uh, Jalen Warren has more yards mm. uh, passing and, or sorry, rushing and, and receiving than Naj does on the season with about 20 less uh, touches. Um, is that going to keep going the way it's going as far as touches are concerned and starts? <laughs> I'm smiling right here because the three topics you brought up are three of the bigger, biggest Yinzer topics I've, uh -huh. that we hear around here. The Canada, that's why <laughs> the, the two rookies, and now Jay Lamorne. That's all they talk about. So uh, you're right in line there, uh, Diggs. Uh, yeah, you puppet. That's what Kaboli <laughs> said. You mark. We have eyes, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I think they like what Jay Lamorne is doing right now. Myself. I think he's in a perfect role with uh, Najee Harris, to be honest with you. Um, it, they're two very different backs, even though uh, both are powerful guys. You keep uh, Jalen Warren on third downs. He's able to convert third downs. He's an unbelievable pass protector guy. Uh, I think you still would like to have Najee. If you're going to run the ball, you're going to run the clock out, you're going to have a guy that has 20, 20-plus 20 carries a game and win a game that way, I think, I think Najee is that type of guy. 
But I think as the season comes on, it goes on, I think you're going to come very darn close to that 50-50 type of mark. There's never going to be a proclamation by Mike Tomlin saying, not Jalen Warren is your starting quarter or running back. That's not going to happen. But the the reps might tighten up a little bit. And Jalen Warren, man, I, that's one guy I wouldn't want to step in front of and try to tackle him. He's powerful. What? Runs hard. Why? And over and he'll jump over you as well. So yeah. they got they got a good dilemma right there with him. Yeah, Naj could be the next Chris Fu and Mata Ma Fala. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It could be. You know, we, we have no idea. <laughs> Hopefully you'll get a chance to really do it. Last question here for you, Koboli from Darius. Yeah, we know uh, Kenny Pickett got banged up uh, against Houston, but obviously played and been practicing. Uh, any update with his health? Is his knee getting back better? And uh, Deontay Johnson, top target, wide receiver. What's the update with him as well? Yeah, I saw Deontay just running out there right now. He looks pretty good. I would assume he's I think he's eligible to come off the IR or start the clock here next week. So I wouldn't be shocked that he's uh, ready to play in L.A. in, in two weeks from now, whenever they come off the um, the bye week. Uh, Kenny, I mean, he looked pretty good middle of last week. I mean, he took the brace off, I believe, on a Thursday and never Force. put it back. Dog. So, yeah. Looking pretty pretty well, too. With Kenny, yeah, he just has, um, you know, he just has to – Tighten up some of his accuracy. Stuff we saw from him in the in the preseason was really good. Him, uh, you know, flushing the pocket when he probably shouldn't be. That's stuff they're working on right now. But uh, health wise, uh, they're pretty good. They need Cam Hayward back. I can tell you that. Well, yeah, we need Cam he, Hayward not to beat my ass. He told me <laughs> I need to relax with everything I'm saying about Coach Tomlin because <laughs> am I wrong in saying this? Am I wrong in saying this? And we're Tomlin. I'm a Tomlin guy. We're Tomlin people. I feel like, just like with what's happening in New England with Bill Belichick, yep. in Pittsburgh, there was a crew of people that would blindly follow Mike Tomlin forever. Like, I think I was one of those people. A lot of the people I was around were those types of people. Those people have gotten a bit more quiet than they have been in years past. I'm not saying they don't feel that way, but they've gotten a bit more quiet. And I think it's all because of this Matt Canada stuff and the way he's publicly sticking up for public enemy number one pretty much in Pittsburgh. Do you have that same sense, or am I misreading the situation? Uh, I don't I think a lot of I mean first of all yeah there's a lot of people who are now anti-Tomlin but I think there was always anti-Tomlin but they just didn't have much to stand on to come criticize him about uh, rather than late I mean they've only won a playoff game and once in like five six years they haven't made it to the Super Bowl in 13 14 years so those people are coming out very vocal now and, and basically blaming everything on him and he is the head coach he does make those decisions but uh, you know just watching Mike Tomlin I know this is a very unpopular thing to say at least locally the guy got the energy as a as, of a 20 year old out there yeah. I mean every, I cannot see him you know, taking a break or, or, you know, we're not working 20, 22 hours a, a, a day. This is a guy that just absolutely loves the game. You don't find that for a guy who's been around 17, 18 Grass years. ain't green on your side. No, what right. you're saying. You might find yourself. The problem is, is they just haven't won enough for the, the crazies or the Yenzers as of right. And, and for a reason, you know, it's true that he, he hasn't won enough and he'll be the first one to tell you that. And there's a high standard that he puts on himself and the, the high standard yeah. that the fans hold him to. And they blame him probably second here. I mean, Art, Ron Art Rooney gets blamed too. So it's Canada Rooney and Tom and nobody's safe. The standard is the standard. Hell yeah. Always has been, always will be. And now they're questioning if Matt Canada is up to the standard of the standard of the Pittsburgh Steelers. You broke some news. Uh, I believe you told us like a week ago, mm -hmm. and then he said it on the radio. <laughs> uh, Byron Leftwich had been reached out to, or reaching out to the Steelers organization about becoming an offensive consultant. Obviously, he has called plays in the past, doesn't have a job now. The Steelers' offense seemingly inept because of the play caller is what everybody on earth with eyes is saying, not the Pittsburgh Steelers, though. They're just kind of new phone who dis to Byron Leftwich. Is that what you're hearing? <laughs> You know, what do they say? Leave, leave it on red? Is that what they call it? The yeah, guy? yeah, yeah, that is what they call it. Yeah. Uh, leave it on red type of stuff. That's stuff that I hear. I mean, that, that's something that would never happen in season with this organization. So, uh, I mean, I like Lefty. He was here around, 
he was here twice. Heck of a dude. I think he's a heck of a football mind, but that's just something probably just putting his name out there, trying to uh, uh, fill the waters. But oh, like you're I saying said, he used you? Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, oh Kaboli! Got a source through a source through a source, remember? Oh, yeah, smart, smart. Anonymous source as always. Hey, we appreciate the hell out of you. Have an incredible bye week over there. All right, let's go, Pens. You going to the game tonight? Absolutely not. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Bull. Yeah, more. What's his problem? <laughs> Pittsburgh, Kaboli, not, not a hockey Rose. guy. He's yeah. not a hockey guy. Him, him and Yoey go at it all the time. Yeah, we don't know who Yoey is. Uh, Josh Yoey. Yes. Yeah, yeah I've seen him on Penguins the internet. beat reporter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen Josh Yoey on the internet. Love that. Thanks to Kaboli. Didn't have his eyes open there for the first he no, did 45 not. seconds no. or so. Well, it's early shot. still. I think it was potentially where he was holding the camera, plus yeah. with him just getting up. Kaboli has... Kaboli has answered the phone for us in numerous places. Oh, yeah. He's the best. We've been in bed with Kaboli before. Yeah, we have. Yep. Mm -hmm. On the toilet. Yeah, We've been on the toilet. A yeah. broken toilet with Kaboli. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kaboli's a grinder. Kaboli's in there. What did we learn from that conversation? Nothing. Right? Rookie yeah, start and moving forward. Thank God. Joey. That not is. the other one, though. Still Roger Jones, maybe, he said. Nah, but, he said he, but he still said we're going to work him back in. Yeah, I believe much. it was uh, zero pressures allowed last week, which at that left tackle position, I don't think that's been done in three, four years. So mm. Big. Against the Ravens, too. The guy's big. Yeah. The guy's very, very, very Joey large. Joey Porter Jr. was number one ranked. Uh, now take this however you want to take it. Yep. PFF corner uh, in the in last week. So what were you nice. saying? That? What was that whole preface of take this however you want to take Some it? Some people don't believe in him. Some people do. Yeah, and D-Butt just made a pretty weird face uh, over in this direction oh, when he said that. He's PFF no, no, guy. I, yeah, I disagree with him. Take it how you take it. Hey, I, I respect those guys, but it's tough to grade a DB position. Oh, that's um, what everybody says about PFF. Uh, I think their stats are right when they're positive about the Steelers. Uh, for sure. Yeah, that's how it's used. And I, and it Aguilar free, did toast free. him, but Aguilar did what Aguilar does and just dropped the ball. Oh, yeah. Unlike Aguilar, mm -hmm. what a sad mm -hmm. scene that was. That was oh, tough. There was a lot Fires, of babies getting tossed, yeah. and then Aguilar just gets murdered on live news. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Awesome. All right, so we learned from Kaboli that maybe the rookies are going to get in there. We learned that uh, the crazy Yinzers are louder about Tomlin. That yep. doesn't mean anything, though, I don't think. No. Matt young. Canada going to be the offense coordinator for the rest of the season. Remember, last year after the bye, they had a lot of success, he said. Mm -hmm. They still True. think that's going to be the path in the avenue after a week of selfie Val. Not a bad time for, you know, bye week. You get a win, mm -hmm. so you can actually say, like, Got to win, division win, rival win. So you can still have those vibes for the week. And then also, we got a lot to figure out. Yeah. I assume the Steelers are happy with the timing of this bye being early as hell. I would think so, too. I Actually, you know, going in the bye being 3-2, and two, it's not the worst thing in the world. Has it looked great? Absolutely not. But that doesn't matter. 3-2 and two is the only thing that matters. And the AFC... Three and two is okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of teams that are going to have a lot of losses yeah. that are going to be able to kind of maybe go on a run towards the end of the season. It's all health-related. Mm -hmm. Everything is hey. health-related at the right position. Sounds like uh, Deontay Johnson That's will huge. be back in, in a couple weeks, huge. too. Who He's a weapon. Be, yeah, probably be a top top target once he gets back. And Pickett, obviously. I mean, Pickens, you know, making that big play. I'm sure that only helped that connection. Going oh, on. I didn't get to what you wanted to ask there as you wrote down on your dry race board about have we talked to Canada about the lack of celebration when your team does something mm. good? Yeah, what yeah. is that about? I think today's the first time they'll be able to ask that, right? What if he said, you think I'm happy ever? Have you heard what everybody is saying? Yeah. Yeah. This place is chanting, fire me. Okay, sure. we score a touchdown. All I'm wondering is how can I get screwed here? <laughs> That is what I'm – I'm sorry. I'm not as happy as everybody else. 70,000 people chant to fire me every single day. <laughs> what if that is his answer? I mean, all right, me. mad respect. Hour two will be on the other side with A.J. Hawk. We'll see you then. Hi, how's it going? My name is Pat McAfee. Used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric. And Brookings <laughs> – College game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee.
go big, go blue, go Jacks. Hosting Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake punt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely walked it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Uh oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right on oh. the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's oh! Hi, Luke! Daniel Russo! Wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face! Yes. Yes. Serious. Go! Yes. Go! Yes! He's being stupid. Now, this game, they celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm a big fan of that. I'm going with the University of Virginia Cavaliers. That was great. Whoa! Oh. Please excuse my dumb friend, Kirk. <laughs> you look at this crowd, they've been out here since 4 a.m. College game day comes to town, they lose their mind. The population of this state is about 800,000, and when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. The Dakota was in Fargo for far too long. Local time. The Dakota marker is back and beautiful. Brooklyn, South Dakota, Elvin and Terry School. They might be the Jack Rabbits, but they're the goats today, ladies and gentlemen. South Dakota State with the win. Give me that price today. No. The following program is a collection of students talking about happenings in the sports world. It is meant to be comedic informative. The opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, their boss, or ESPN. There may be some cuss words because that's how humans in the real world talk. If you are young, please seek permission before watching any further. Hey! Why? Let's go! This show stinks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for. Ah! The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, you pink! Damn it! Be a friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. Sport, 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 sport! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. Hour two of this program starts now. Football! Happened last night. It's also happening this evening as Jacksonville State uh -huh. takes on Liberty yeah. in our first real Tuesday night action. One half of the hammer, Don Cowboys tone dicks. Three Conference USA games tonight. Let's go! Woo! Conference USA came in and stole the Maction Tuesday yeah, they, they and said we'll start this a little bit earlier. We have football on tonight, but also the NHL season begins. The Golden Knights are on at 10.30. They're the reigning, defending, undisputed. Shout out to Paul Heyman. And Stanley Cup champions in the banner dropping evening at 8 p.m. The Pittsburgh Penguins, the greatest hockey franchise to ever exist, mm. will host the Chicago Blackhawks, who have the next one, Connor Bedard playing for them. And at 5:30, Nashville and Tampa will start this entire thing. It's a beautiful time of year. We're about to have hockey in the middle of the week, Why? football at the end of the week, Why? and then put that on repeat for the next. Five, six months. Uh, Toxic Table is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Nine-year NFL vet Darius J. Butler is here. And joining us live from an attic in Ohio is the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Haw. Yay! Yay! A.J., sweet hoodie, bruh. Thank you. Yeah, hell of a game last night, huh? It was a hell of a game last night. Let's dive right into it. Dump truck Bob Spillane has two picks, a couple massive shots, has the C on his chest. I was mind blown that the guy that we saw in Pittsburgh 
lining up Derrick Henry from 15 yards out, running his face into him, and being that tone setter for the Steelers has become one of the guys for that Raiders defense alongside Max Crosby. They ate last night, A.J. Hawk. Yeah, they did. I, I love his, uh, his tin advisor, the yeah. jet black visor as well. That thing looks amazing. But what did we say yesterday with Fred Warner? Hey, if you run to the ball, great things happen. We mm -hmm. see that pick that you just showed. The second one, he turns, runs the ball. Peters makes a great play, pops it up. Your teammates there to uh, to capitalize on it. So yeah, I thought it was. I thought the Raiders' defense played very well. Uh, what do you think of Max Crosby just being a game wrecker all the time? He's awesome. Like first off, the dude's motor is crazy. But then the crazy bend he has too. Like when you watch that how, how like yeah, all of it. Like he can just Violent. when you can turn your shoulders like that and and run like that, and you have the motor that he has, and just obviously the. The competitive stamina to honestly never want to lose a rep, like it's uh, it's special. I think it's it's a beautiful thing to watch, honestly. And we don't want to keep harping on this, but he's supposed to have Chandler Jones mm. on the other side. Yep. Man. So that would have been even yep. more so. And you see the Raiders get the win in the fashion that they did last night against this Packers team. And I don't know if AJ Dillon took a flop there, like an offensive lineman did last night. That was bad. We're, we're gonna have to talk. Oh, we're gonna yeah. talk to AQ Shipley about Need it. That. What are they doing? <laughs> what a joke. Offensive lineman are flopping. Right in the middle of the field. Very easy to see. Well, when your offense ain't worth shit and you need a first down <laughs> on third down, it's hey, yeah, exactly. Go you. Eat, eat some dirt. You gotta do what you gotta do, I right. guess. But that offensive line position, that was kind of something that I thought would never take place. But you think about what the Raiders were able to do last night, and Jimmy. You know, Devontae Adams afterwards, after his 46-yard appearance, uh, with a shoulder injury yeah. lingering, AC, yep. hasn't mm -hmm. been able to practice. He said, if we're only going to throw me the ball when I have single coverage, I'm only going to have 22 catches on a year. True. He said, we have to figure out how to give me the ball more, even after a win. I don't think he was taking a shot at anybody. I think he was just talking a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So, Devontae doesn't have, like, this massive night. They still win. Yeah. Interesting time for the Raiders right now. Interesting. Uh, you know, still... A receiver like that, once again, we always talk about players who change the math. He's definitely one of those guys, and he'll be out there. He'll be drawing shell coverage over the top of him or double team. So, yeah, you have to scheme up ways to still get him the ball, just like we saw with Jamar Chase when he was kind of made some comments. You saw they made it a point to get him the ball. So Josh McDaniels, even last year, I think it was early in the year, it took him a while to really start feeding Devontae how they should. But he's a guy who's going to create space. I don't care how many guys you put on him. It's going to be a point in the route where he's open. So Jimmy G's got to find him. Joining us now is a man who threw a lot of balls to yeah. Devontae Adams. Mm -hmm. No matter how many people were covering him. And no matter what the play was called. A ball was potentially going to 17 in a massive moment from this man's hand. This man, four-time NFL MVP. This man, new quarterback for the New York Jets. This man, walking faster than any human has ever walked after tearing his Achilles. This man gives nicknames that start jerseys in pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. What's up, dude? Hey, what's going on? Hey, great to see you. Let's uh, piggyback off what we were just talking about. Devontae Adams, after the game, was asked about his production last night, had 46 yards. Then he said, if we're only going to throw me the ball when I'm single coverage, I'm only going to have 22 catches. At what stage did Devontae start becoming the focal point of defenses? And at what stage do you, as a quarterback with Devontae Adams, just have to not care about any of that and know that he's going to make a play? Well, Devontae's always open. Um that's the facts. Uh, you know, cover to him is just different than other people. He, he's got just an incredible uh, skill set. He's got range. He's got uh, ball skills. He can uh, create separation. He's the best in the league at late hands. So you just got to stick with him. And listen, I, I watched I watched the game last night. I love Devontae. Uh, he's still, you know, dear friend of mine. Uh, I thought he handled everything really, really well because that game meant a lot to him. You know, going back against your former team, four targets, that ain't it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he, you would understand why he would maybe be uh, feeling a certain way after the game. And if you're Jimmy G, obviously you've been in this position before, and take us through this because whenever somebody says they're always open, they're always open, I don't think we fully understand it. Like even if somebody is standing on him or two people are on him, still a guy that you give a chance to. Is that what you, what everybody means whenever it's like always open or what What does it exactly mean for a quarterback? Well, look, I mean, the, you know, Jair is a fantastic player for sure, and I love Rasul. Rasul is a great competitor as well. I, those guys weren't, you know, singled up a lot. You know, it wasn't like – job was following all over the field and it was just one-on-one -on -one matchup i think that's a misnomer it's like there's not these one-on-one -on -one matchups anymore in the league really you know like 
like last week, you know, we we had two days ago, we had, uh, you know, Garrett and Pat Sertan, who's phenomenal, you know, phenomenal player. And they're like, oh, it's going to be a great duel between Pat and Garrett. No, you know, you motion from one side to the other. A lot of times, unless they're a man covers, the corner stays backside. So you're not even getting that matchup all the time. Now, there were certain times where Pat traveled with Garrett, and you saw some, uh, you know, some of that matchup. But just like last night, you know, they moved Devontae around. They put him in a slot. Ja's going to stay outside in those situations. Uh, plus, they had a lot of help for him. Uh, but when it comes to, to feeding them, you, you just got to you got to give him an extra look. You got to give him an extra look. Uh, because he's able to do things on different timing. And there was a comment last night about, you know, like Jacoby Myers, you know, gets open on time or something. Well, that was like the gist of the comment. And I was just kind of laughing at myself going, that, that's an uninformed opinion that actually isn't based on fact at all. Because like, the fact are that what Devontae does in the line of scrimmage, what Devontae does down the field is like no one else can do. And you have to give him opportunities. We, we played Minnesota a couple years ago, his, our last year together. And they say, you know what, we're going to play two trail. We're going to play a two-man trail on him. And we had two hitch conversions against two trail because literally they didn't. They thought there's no way they're going to throw this ball. we got a guy underneath. we got Harrison Smith over the top. And I just said, we talked on the sidelines. He goes, hey, I think we can fit a couple quick hole shots in there. And we did. And we're just kind of laughing because it just they don't expect that to happen. But you have to kind of stick with certain plays and trust that Devontae is going to – you're going to be open because that's, you know, when you got an offense and you're trying to be dynamic, you got to get the ball to your to your best player. So, listen, I mean, it's tough. They try to take him away. He's going to be the focus of every single game plan. But you got to still find ways to uh, to get him probably more than, uh, than four opportunities. I think Jimmy G is going to be pumped to hear all that, by the way. Like, legitimately, yeah. coming from you, it would make sense. Go ahead, AJ. Oh, I mean, it's, 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 no, legit. I'm saying, like, he's probably going to listen and be like, okay, like, that makes sense. Because so he wants Devontae to be great, too. You know what I mean? I don't think he wants to deal with that. Don't you think, Aaron? Yeah. yeah, I agree. Okay, good. All right, sweet. I think we just <laughs> made the Rangers 17. better. You throw it to 17, you're like, you're gonna, life's going to get better. Life's going to be better. Stats are going to be better. Offense is going to move smoother. Like, you know, you got you to gotta give him some chances. Go ahead, AJ. I'm not talking specifically about Devontae. We know he is different, but have you seen quarterbacks in the past or has it ever happened to you where you feel like, all right, this guy's not getting enough targets, he's a stud, I got to find a way to get him more looks, and you have to force the ball to him. We always hear about this, like if a stud's like OBJ or something comes to a new team, oh, are they going to feel like you have to force some balls just to try to get him going? Is that a real thing? I think there's a few things at play. One, uh, you got to you got to find ways to get the, get a guy a ball early in the game. I think to get him to get him into the game and get him feeling good about uh, uh, being a part of the mix. And so we, you know, that's we would use run solutions a lot of time as those things. So we have a run call, then we have, uh, you know, just a little smoke crowd line of scrimmage or maybe a one step slant and trying to get him or a bubble. I always tried to get him a ball early in the game and I did it with Jordy Nelson as well. Um, and Greg Jennings and uh, driver over the years where you just, you want your best player, your best skilled player to kind of get in, feel like they're a part of the game early just so they kind of get in. So get them a couple of balls early uh, to get them going. Um, and you know, it's again, it's a different, uh, when you say force feed, it's a different meaning with a guy like Devante compared to somebody else, because he's just more open than, than, uh, than probably everybody else on the team. And he has a wider catch radius and all these things that I mentioned earlier. So you have to kind of find a way to get him involved. Sorry, I got a BFR. I got my BFR. Going. Is that thing putting your Achilles back together? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a bunch of people just came out and went, brruh, 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 let's go out and pieces. this through. Yeah, it's five minute sequences here, so this is we we set this up so I can. I'm in the middle of rehab, so I have a five minute uh, window where now Hell it's yeah. all pumped up. Hell yeah! And they appreciate it. And then, you know, so in ten minutes you're gonna hear that noise again if we're still doing this. So. Hey, sounds good to me. But I appreciate all this information because I think a lot of us, whenever we hear like, "Hey, he only had this amount of targets," and then somebody could say, "Well, he was covered," and then analytics people will be like, "Well, he was more covered than this." What you're saying is there's some people that that is not like it does not matter. And Devonte is one of well, those it's, humans. Pat, it's that, but it's also. You know, you got to find ways to take the double off. If you're gonna if you're gonna set them up outside, and especially outside the numbers every single split, you're gonna get doubled a bunch, right? But if you move in slot, if you motion, if you get them into, you know, number three and a three by one, and throw them a bubble maybe to get going. They, you know, on that drive where he had three of his four catches, you know, you saw they put him in the slot. He ran a looky route. Packers are bringing pressure. Preston was kind of, you know, no man's land there, and people were wondering why the hell is he doing it. Well, every now and then you got to bring a pressure, and you have to drop an end. Like, that's part of it. 
you know, like Jimmy G did a good job looking off to the right, the hole in the back or to the right, and then, you know, coming back to to, uh, to Devontae, and then they came back. Yeah, it's beautiful. You get the clip right there. And then came back, and he threw him a screen, I think, uh, in one of the next plays, and then you hit him, in, you know, on third down the red zone. But it's, you know, you got to, you, you know, the last part of this is, is something that happened over time. When you have a player that comes from another team, right, you know how much that means to them to go back and play your former team. Like, as a quarterback, there's just something that's like, man, I want to get this guy a touchdown. I want to get him a ball. I want to make him feel, you know, because we're all competitors. You want to be, you want to make them feel like, hey, you messed up. You know, you messed up not not bringing me back. And and you just there's something in you. It's like I got to throw this guy a touchdown. I got I got to you got to get this guy a ball. You know, in the red zone. I got to get this guy a lot of opportunities. Um, so I, you know, look, Devontae out of the way right way. He's a pro. And Jimmy's doing the best he can, and he I felt like he played a pretty clean game last night, and they got the win, uh, which is the most important thing. But if you want to be dynamic, and we went through stretches like this over the years for sure, where, you know, Devontae didn't get the amount of, you know, uh, targets that he probably should have in that game. In the following game, it was always like, all right, 15 targets coming your way. Yeah, that's like A.J. Brown a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And then for our team, the Colts, we had Andre Johnson from the Texans, obviously, on the mm-hmm. Colts. I think he maybe had like 20 yards the rest of the season. Against the Texans, he went for like 360, four touchdowns. <laughs> Andrew Luck was like, where are you? How are you? Let's go ahead and do this entire thing. It's interesting because the humans that are involved, let's talk about the humans that are involved on the other side of the sideline last night. Whenever you're watching the Packers and Jordan Love, are you judging? Are you trying to guess what plays that LaFleur is calling? And whenever you see where Jordan Love is at, especially in that primetime moment last night, what are your thoughts and do you send him a message? Yeah, I sent him a message last night. I love Jordan. You know, he's a he's a great kid. I think he's showed a lot of things early in the season. Uh, he's shown ability to throw the ball down the field. Uh, he's very athletic. Uh, I feel like he's he's had some uh, number of uh, really nice look offs uh, and and uh, just a number of plays that kind of I think the average fan has got to be like, oh, you know, this guy is going to be around here for a while. This guy can really play. Um, as we've seen in in New York and Jersey. Uh, with our young stud, you know, week to week, the narrative can really change. You know, it can be, you know, you're you know, not the guy and this is a mistake one week and the next week you're going to be around for 15 years. And that's the overreaction of our league. And the important thing as a quarterback is just trying to keep your confidence, not kind of get into all the bullshit, realize it's just part of it. There's going to be ups and downs in your career. There's going to be ups and downs on the season. You just got to keep pushing through. You got to be the same guy every single day. You got to inspire your teammates and bring that consistency. And They got a bye week coming up and then uh, then going to, I believe, uh, Denver, I think, after that. So a good chance to, uh, to bounce back for them. But uh, love Jordan. And, you know, obviously watching the game, there's – there's things about the offense that I know because I ran, you know, similar, similar offense there. So I have an idea about what they're trying to do. Um, I felt like kind of like in our game, there were times in the red zone uh, where uh, maybe they weren't as aggressive as, as they could have been. Um, you know, we in our game had a couple where we kind of ran the ball, ran the ball. And then one of the toughest plays in football is like third and goal from the, it's called seven to the 10, you know. There's just not a lot of great plays in that situation. Uh, even six and five, I feel like those are those are tough situations. So um, I thought he made a great throw to Christian uh, on the on the keeper, where Christian kind of got lost there. And Peters actually makes what turns out to be a great play. To stop. I mean, if if Christian scores on that play, it's seventeen ten. That's a whole different ball game. He horse collars them, gets them down like at the five. They hold him to a field goal, and now it's thirteen ten instead of seventeen ten. That was a big game changing play. Um, obviously he got unlucky, uh, you know, on the, on the tipped interception. The other one, I don't, he probably just didn't see the, uh, the inside backer there on the, uh, on the strike route, but listen, there's going to be growing pains. I had growing pains my rookie year. Uh, we all go through it. Or sorry, my rookie, my first year starting my fourth year, just like him. Uh, he's going to be just fine. Like I said, he's a great kid. They got a young team. They've had some injuries. Aaron Jones has been out the last few weeks. He's a dynamic player. Uh, Christian, you know, had been out, just came back this last week. So um, I would just say to the Packer fans, just take some deep breaths. You know, just trust, uh, you know, trust this kid. He's a great kid. He cares about it. He's going to be around for a while, and they're going to get it fixed. Okay. 
I think Packers fans are going to love hearing that. And as you were talking about being more aggressive in the red zone, Ty gave a thank you over here quietly. So he was very appreciative to hear that you're thinking along the same lines as him. Let's talk about another young kid. Tone has a question for you. Yeah, speaking of young studs, uh, C.J. Stroud has zero – or sorry, zero interceptions to start his career. And it's not like he's not throwing the ball. He's third in yards as well. How – like as someone who – is the best of all time at not throwing interceptions while still throwing for yards. How impressive is it as for a rookie to be doing that this early in his career? Yeah, it's incredible. It really is. Um, you know, ball security is job security, and he's done an incredible job of that. I'd be interested to, to, to look at how many, um, I think because they track this, and again, uh, I think some of it is, is subjective in nature, but they track the number of like turnover-worthy plays. And I'd be interested to see how many throws, you know, were uh, in that category because I feel like overall he's been doing a fantastic job of taking care of the football and not like having plays with oh that should have been picked or oh you know that was a bad read. I don't feel like in the in the few times I've seen him on the red zone channel when when the games have been have been on, uh, he hasn't been making bad decisions. So uh, just again, I don't know him at all, but from afar, I do appreciate he seems to be a really humble kid. Uh, he's got his head screwed on the right way. He's a tough kid. And a lot of people were dogging the Texans. They're going to be terrible. Uh, but what D'Amico's done there, after, especially after a 0-2 start and coming back and winning a couple uh, you know, a couple big games, they had a tough one there at the end. TJ had an incredible drive. I saw that to, to put them ahead late in the game, and they just couldn't, uh, uh, couldn't stop them there on that last drive. But, uh, man, 180-something – Six. Throws in a row. I think 180. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, without a pick to start a career, that's phenomenal. And then, Tone, like you said, I think the most important stat is not like he's thrown for 150 yards a game or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was averaging, I think, 300 a game before this last game. So, big uh, uh, big props to, uh, to CJ. Great start to his career. And, again, ball security is job security. What do you think? Do you think he's understanding defense is better than others? That's a big part of the turnovers or no? Listen, um, there's some things about coaches that get uh, – too much credit and some things about coaches get too much blame especially when it comes to offense you know like i see certain things like they're blaming the coach for this specific call or this this thing that happened it's like no, no at the end of the day the coach uh makes a missed call and then the quarterback uh, makes a decision um so the coach has an opportunity to put the quarterback in a position to be successful but the quarterback ultimately has the final say so on where the ball goes and what decision actually gets gets made so I think there's got to be some credit to his coordinator for putting him in a good position. But at the end of the day, CJ's the one pulling the trigger, and he deserves a ton of credit for making accurate throws and being opportunistic and taking care of the football. Because uh, as a young quarterback, you know that's uh, that's a lot of the growing pains is usually you know the fumbles and the picks and the turnovers, and he just hasn't done them. So they've been in you know a lot of football games, and I think they're two and three right now, uh, which most people. Probably didn't think it was going to happen in the first five games. So, uh, a lot of love for uh, for CJ. Great start to his career and uh, continued success, young man. Especially without Jack Easterby down there. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, I think I read Jack Easterby. I don't know if you know who that guy is. He was FCA guy for the Patriots, assistant GM slash owner <laughs> of Texans in a matter of just like twelve months. Good prayer circle. Get you to the top there for Jack Easterby. He leaves. We didn't know how they fill their void. Well, Casario seemingly knows what he's doing. So does D'Amico and CJ's ball. And you talk about, you know, the co coordinator's job is to put a uh, quarterback in a good position. But ultimately, it's a quarterback that's pulling the trigger. Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy, seemingly a great tag team. I know you complimented them last week. Another week of dominance for Brock Purdy. And Dan Orlovsky came out and said <laughs> that you put Mac Jones in that offense, Mac Jones would be doing the same thing that Brock Purdy is doing right now. I guess in theory that makes sense because Mac can throw every ball. He's accurate. He does this. Brock Purdy's brain, though. Oh, what's that? You're not working, bro. You're not working, Who's that, JK? Is that JK? You're not working. Hey, he's yeah. not working. JK! Not working. You gotta let him work. <laughs> hey, what's going on, man? Hey, yeah. he's jealous. He hey look, I look, I'm out here working. I see him on the TV talking on the phone. That ain't never been to work. He's got, got that machine. He's got that machine on right now. Got those modalities over there. Hey, thanks, bro. I'm almost. I'm on my second switch. I'm proud of you. How old's he? How old's he? How old's he? Hey, how old is he? Uh, he's young. 
very young. Yeah, you're 39. I love the fact that he's, he's 24 years old. We just looked it up. 24 year old Damn. coming in there. Hey, hold it. <laughs> I'm working. What is, I love that. second sweat. You, right outside the door here. It's on TV for sure. Yeah, well, he's a, I love J, JK. Is an awesome kid, man. He really is. He's a fantastic, fantastic kid. It's been fun to, to be pushing with him. I mean, there's, you know, we had another. Uh, uh, another guy in here who uh, tore his Achilles. Unfortunately, we had an injury at, again with my squad. Uh, another Achilles. So there's there's a few of us who are going to be pushing each other to to get back. But J.K. had surgery a couple of days after me, so we've been we've been working together a bunch. Well, we love that Achilles healing factory. You guys go, hey, you guys keep pushing each other. Yeah, yeah. Keep pushing modern medicine forward too. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. Seems like everybody's way ahead of schedule. I want to get back to what I was asking about Brock Purdy though. You put him over last week and talked about him and you talk about how the quarterback is ultimately the guy that has to pull the trigger and put the ball there. So it's not just the coordinator. Dan Orlovsky said you put Mac Jones over there, he'd be doing the same exact thing that Brock Purdy's doing and Dan probably has a reason to say that. But I feel like that that's everybody's opinion that doesn't like Brock Purdy. They just think it's Shanahan's offense and yada, yada, yada. This dude makes seemingly every right decision quicker than any young quarterback has in a long time. I guess C.J. Stroud is another guy to kind of throw into that thing. Why is that the thought? And do you think Brock Purdy hears any of this whenever he's going about his business throughout the week? Oh, I hope he does. I hope he does. Because I... It's that's just a little extra fodder, a little extra motivation on the shoulder. Um, I'll tell you what, man, I don't know how you watch that film and come to that conclusion. <laughs> now, I know there's a lot of a lot of so called experts on the network that you're repping now. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, don't throw us in that old thing. Whoa, uh, hey. no, nobody on your show. I mean, of course, you guys, you guys all have educated opinions, but you're also open minded to not be having all the answers. You know, you constantly are talking about. You know, how you guys are, well, you personally, you know, how you're not the smartest in the room. All of us. Um, All time. And I'm not claiming to be the smartest in the room either. But I will say that uh, when I watch Brock Purdy, I see uh, a guy making some big time throws. And he made a couple the other night that were uh, incredible. Throwing over the top of guys, throwing around guys, moving up in the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, making plays. Um, and, yeah, Kyle's a great play caller. And Kiddo, you know. He's, you know, I saw him on the show yesterday. He's a great player. And Debo is a fantastic, you know, uh, Swiss Army knife. And CMC is one of the best, if not the best running backs in the league. And the Lion is great. And on and on and on. And at the end of the day, one guy pulling the trigger. And he's been making a lot of really good decisions. You talk about interceptions. He doesn't have one yet on the season, I don't believe, right? No. So this kid, you know, he was drafted with the last pick. There's some motivation. I remember we played him in the preseason that year, and he came in and he took him right down the field. I remember thinking, like, man, this, this, you know, that's, that's pretty cool for that kid. You know, last pick in the draft. Hey. Might have a chance to make the team. Um, you know, Allen would say there's a lot to that uh, that Iowa State mentality, I'm sure. You know, yeah. how, they, how they raise them out there. I know Ty doesn't like that. <laughs> yeah, he'd be <laughs> wrong, uh, but that's okay. <laughs> but that's it. But I would say that's probably a pretty fun, fun city to hang out in, right? Ames? Ames? Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. The armpit of America, you bet. What is fun your problem? Ames is a good place. Nah, they got good people up there. You want to have fun in Iowa, you go to Iowa City. But that's you know that's neither here nor there. Well, I'm not going to well, Waterloo. I mean, according not according to, to Brees and not according to, uh, to Alan Lazard. But um, anyway, listen, Brock's done a great job. I hope they keep. Shit talking him just for his sake. Just give him a lecture motivation because that's always fun. But uh, I think he's uh, he's quieting people every single week. I love it, and he's getting paid nine hundred forty thousand. They can do so much with that. And he's living with a roommate. I saw. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, a roommate, and, and he's doing the ride share program as well, or something like that. He's probably having it because if you think about the taxes out there, oh, nine hundred forty thousand. Hi. Yeah, making like two hundred. Hi, that. and then rent in San. Hi, yeah. this, guy, paycheck, the paycheck. this guy's clearing fourteen thousand this year. Yeah. Slicing and dicing. Maybe he's, a part of, maybe he's a part of a co-op, and they have some sort of barter system for. That'd be goods sweet. and services and stuff just to cut down other ways to save money. Who knows? Yeah, I wonder how it's all working. Hey, we hope you survive this yeah. year off the field. Good this luck. is old Good school. Luck, this is old school. Yeah. Guy's got two, three jobs to play in the NFL. That's how much he appreciates <laughs> this thing. AJ has something for you, Aaron. Aaron, how did you feel watching uh, Zach Wilson and your boys rally behind your old coach behind Hackett and get the win over the Denver Broncos? 
I was a little nerve wracking for sure at times, but I loved every minute of it. I think one of the coolest things is watching the end of that game, just to see how how people love Nathaniel so much. And you know, he's not going to make a big deal about it, but he's a man. And those comments were horseshit uh, in the beginning of the season, and we all wanted that for him for sure. And so I'm really uh, really happy for him. Uh, happy for Zach. You know, he made some big time throws. He made a big throw on the stick nod to Big Conk uh, down the middle. That was really important. I uh, had a couple other big third down conversions. Um, and then, you know, Quincy coming up with a big strip sack and Bryce picking that up and running. It's pretty special. So proud of our boys. That's a big win for us. Awesome for uh, for Hack. Again, you can see all the love. I mean, just nonstop hugs. Solid game in the game ball after the afterwards. And just really proud of our guys. You continue to crush hashtags, just yeah. absolutely slaughtering them on all social media platforms. I did appreciate you making a rare appearance on the internet going, keep my coach's name out your mouth. <laughs> just a little bit of a callback there after that game. Did you see how Sean Payton handled it afterwards? And have you talked to Sean Payton since this whole thing took place? Okay. No. All right. All right. Dead forever. Fine. That's We are never... Is that it? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't talked to him. So. <laughs> nice. Are you open to talking to him? Yeah, no, problem. no problem talking to him or anybody. So, if well, he I don't know about that. <laughs> there might be a few people. I, you might not. So, you might so, there might be a few people. Yeah, there might be a few people. <laughs> so, Sean Payton FaceTimes you. Let's say he FaceTimes you later today. Well, service. And uh, you answer that. It's be a FaceTime. No, it's got to be a FaceTime. It's a call. It's not going to go through. So it has to be a FaceTime. Moment. We all know that. The Dolphin. Well, we learned. Everybody learned that. Yeah, now certainly. We do. While the Dolphins are doing it, okay, the Dolphins are doing it out there. You have your Achilles hovering above two Dolphins fornicating with yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. He FaceTimes. Are you stopping the rehab of your Achilles to talk to Sean Payton? Depends if the ayahuasca is hitting at that time. If it is, <laughs> sorry, brother. Can't, can't pick it up. We do not have time. <laughs> can't wait to hear how that goes. Ty has a question. Yeah, did you appreciate the Jets' social media and how everybody responded to this thing? I love our social media. I think they do a great job. They got good content. What was that? Jets drive? One Jets yeah, drive? One yeah, one drive. Yeah. Sweet. That's phenomenal. I, I think we've been learning a lot about the Jets through you visiting over there. The PR guy, certainly something, but the social media team, fantastic. <laughs> Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Aaron, I don't know how much you've seen of him this year, but Gardner Minshew's kind of taken over in Indianapolis. Obviously, uh, AR gets hurt. He's been hurt a couple times. And I know like the, the saying is like, hey, backup quarterback always needs to be ready to go in, be ready to play, but... I know, like, as a fan of the Packers watching you guys, like, if you would have got hurt, everyone's like, okay, well, we're shit out of luck. You know, that's just kind of the way it is, so you don't ever really expect it to happen. But Gardner's played in, I think, like, four of the five games so far this year, and he's also going to start kind of now moving forward with uh, AR as an AC joint issue. How? I mean, obviously, you're never in that position, but how difficult do you think it is to kind of be a backup quarterback but also know, like, hey, there's a good chance I might – have to go out there and play meaningful snaps every single game and then being able to just immediately kind of control the locker room. There was a clip of him going ape shit after they won. Like, how difficult do you think that situation would be? I think it's much more difficult when you're a younger player. I think as, as you've gotten some starts under your belt, uh, I would imagine, um, and then have some time on the field, it's much easier. You have experience to fall back on. You have positive memories to think about. You have um, – kind of a Rolodex of good plays to kind of hit your brain at various times when you need some positive affirmation or some reminder about certain plays. And uh, Gardner's played uh, some really good football um, and uh, bounced around a little bit now, but uh, he's very reliable backup, very reliable. And and a guy who can come in and win games for you, not just kind of uh, try and hold on or you're going to win in spite of. And I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. I think uh, I, I got to see some of his plays Sunday and, I thought he did a really nice job. Uh, and, again, what's the formula for for being effective It's uh, and, and sticking around? It's taking care of the football. It's being opportunistic. And then it's, it's uh, you know, just keeping things moving forward and, and positive plays. And, and I'm sure he prepares the right way. He was ready to play. Um, you know, the young kid they got there, uh, Richardson, he, he's going to be uh, 
know, he's got a chance to be really special. Now, like I tell a lot of young quarterbacks, you know, sometimes you got to slide, though. You know, he's got to be – he's a big, strong dude. I tell this to Josh all the time. Josh Allen, he's been doing it for a while. But, like, every now and then there's a, there's a time and a place for you want to run somebody over. Um, I mean, Josh or Justin Fields, I feel like, ran somebody over in, in, yeah. in the game on third. Oh, yeah. Gain a zero. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Gain a zero. Yeah, it was awesome. But those plays are not really sustainable – Long, long term, that way of playing. So, uh, but he's going to learn, and, and he, I think he'll have a nice long career in the league. But while he's out, I mean, you'll get a good chance to watch, uh, you know, a real pro in Gardner, and and uh, Indy's got to feel good about, uh, you know, him and, and the opportunity to win with him at the at the helm. Hell yeah! And we got Jonathan Taylor back, and however long he needs, we got Zach Moss at running back. Who mm-hmm. is this guy's probably going to be trade bait? We assume by the end of the season or halfway through the season. What's that? Zach Moss says, hey, I see you, JT. You're a great player. Congrats on the contract. Let me get to 160 this week. Yeah, real quick. Zach Moss woke up and said, you can make $26.5 million still at running back? Okay. <laughs> Let me go ahead and do this thing. He's been doing that all season for us, though, because the offensive line has been so yep. much better. Mm-hmm. So we assume that Jonathan Taylor will come in and help whenever he gets back to form. He's been out for a while. But Gardner Minshew, whenever I went up to training camp uh, this past offseason with the Colts I was talking to all the boys and then I got a chance to chat with Gardner Minshew everybody said the same thing like he he doesn't do social media anymore he doesn't do anything he basically said I want to make the most of my football life while it still exists like that is it's almost like a perspective changer whenever people kind of get towards the end of their football run I'm not saying Gardner Minshew is that he could probably play for another 10 years but at Jacksonville he took over he was the guy. Yep. Then he goes to Philadelphia. He's the backup, wants to be the starter, plays well, and they tell him, you're the backup to Jalen Hurts. Then he comes to the Colts knowing he's going to be the backup, but now it's like his team has been his team for four of the first five weeks, and it certainly is for the next four at least. That perspective about the end of your career and potentially not having football is a very real one. Whenever you think about that, do you think that's a motivator for guys? Do you think that's a, a clear picture that everybody needs? And did you have any of those situations throughout your 18-year career thus far that you can recall and be like, I appreciate the fact that I'm still playing at this stage where maybe through an era you can get a little bit kind of down into dumps and maybe not as appreciative? Yeah, for sure. I think there's always moments. A lot of times it's, uh, you know, it's very jarring moments. For me, maybe injuries, uh, that help you recalibrate your perspective uh, for Gardner. It could have been, you know, a benching or uh, being, being cut or uh, not being wanted back by a team. Uh, so I give him a lot of credit. Now I'm just going to throw this out there. This could be totally false, uh, but he looks way more like a hippie. Uh, <laughs> than me. So I don't know if he's had some major perspective change, there could be some, you know, use of plant medicine. I, you know, if he has been, you know, kudos to him. If he wants to reach out, I'm, I'm always here. But I've been a fan of his by the way he plays, the way he carries himself, and the fact that uh, he's he has a strong mustache game as well. So, um, yeah, there he is right there. Look at him. Yeah, he's awesome. Yep. In real life, too, just like all ball. That's all I care about. He's been the consummate professional, like mentor to AR, but also I'm okay being a starter still in this league. We're lucky to have him, certainly, and we hope AR survives. Connor has a question for you, Aaron. Yeah, Aaron, a lot of teams are in it, but there are some teams, the Patriots included, who are not. And some of these one in four teams, the season kind of changes a little for him, it feels like. Belichick said, you know, the Patriots need to go back to, you know, ground zero and kind of change their entire philosophy. And then the Vikings in the NFC North, they're kind of talking about, you know, moving Kirk, Justin Jefferson's on the IR now. What do they do do now that they're one and four? From a player's perspective, even though, you know, you weren't on many teams that were out of it by the time week five wrapped up, but from a player's perspective, when you hear your coach say those things or you kind of hear the fodder of a team being, you know, blown up and sold for bits and pieces, the Broncos, another team after you guys just beat them, how does that affect, you know, players in the locker room and what that season kind of turns into for guys that are on those teams? It starts to turn into thinking about what your off-season plans are. Where you're going to vacation? <laughs> um, I would, I would imagine. Now, listen, coming out of training camp, whether you want to admit it or not, I think everybody knows, especially veteran players, know that there's you know six to twelve teams that could win it, and you kind of know. Uh, and again, every now and then there's a team that comes out of nowhere, but you kind of know: are we that team or are we not that team? 
every now and then you can get off to a hot start when you're not sure your team is there, or sometimes the opposite, where you might get off to a rough start. And you're thinking to yourself, like we had in in, uh, in 14, like, man, we got a damn good team. What's We just got to get some something going here. And then we went to Chicago and won a game and got on a roll. And it just kind of happens for some teams and doesn't for others. But when you start hearing that stuff, and again, I've talked about it, and we've talked about it, and you guys talked about it, the trade deadline is so much more of a thing now in the NFL. And I think it's coming up at the end of this month, right? So you're going to see, just like in baseball, you know, after that all-star break happens, who's uh, selling and who's buying. So basically who's tanking for Caleb Williams and who's, uh, you know, trying to uh, to make a push here. Um, and it, it sucks, you know, because as a competitor, listen, we play this game for a lot of different reasons. But deep down, we want to win championships. You know, we want to be a part of special teams. We want to make runs in the playoffs. We want to play in Super Bowl. We want to win championships. And when that gets gets taken away uh, by poor play and then management or whatever the case may be, injuries sometimes, um, it's it's demoralizing. But uh, start thinking about where are you going to go that's warm that can take your mind off of the frustration of another season lost. Yeah, it's amazing like what what the nba uh, you know because you're yeah. talking about the trade deadline it's like i think i feel like the nba has kind of ushered in this into the sports world almost where guys like hey you know what not happy here hamstring hamstring get me to a new team now there isn't as many guys that can play in the nba so they certainly have a lot more leverage but if you're at the you know if you're one of the guys oh, yeah you can kind of dictate where you want to go, how you want to do it. And I think the NFL is getting a little bit more aggressive at the trade deadline as well. It's good fodder for us. Vaughn Miller, though, remember he got traded to L.A.? Yeah. He said he had no idea. Right. I just woke up and they traded Vaughn Miller, who's like Hall of Famer out of town. That's always going to be a bit jarring as well, Aaron. Yeah, and there's going to be some of that for sure. There's going to be those names that you're surprised by. Um, it's the image is a little different because they have the buyout stuff. So a lot of times, you know, the guy gets traded to one team, like, oh, he's going to be in, you know, stuck playing for the, you know, Washington Wizards or whatever it might be, and and then boom, bought out. Then he goes to, you know, Golden play State. for you know, a great team like the Milwaukee Bucks or something. South of- um, yeah, about that Boston, chill out. Um, <laughs> Thanks for Drew. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, but I think <laughs> at, the, at the deadline now, you're seeing just who's going to buy and who's going to sell. You look at the contracts, you know, guys. On expiring contracts, obviously that's uh, you know it's always uh, a guy to move or you know a team that just says you know what this ain't working we got to move on and uh, you know star player wants to go compete for a championship you never know what can happen. Were you almost traded? I don't remember if it was when your contract was up or if you were almost traded. Was there was there trade discussions for you and did you have a no trade clause? I got traded, uh, Pat, this offseason. Mm, that's right. Yeah, that's one hundred percent right. I <laughs> forgot about that. How about when Denver almost happened? Was it when Denver almost happened? Did you have to okay Denver? Like, how does that whole thing work? Uh, no, there would have had to have been, uh, you know, the Packers okaying it and compensation and all that stuff. How much are you? Because you had to give the okay for the Jets, I assume, right? Yeah, I mean, I think not. I actually, I didn't. You know, they could have traded me to anybody, um, and. But obviously, I wanted to be in in New York with the Jets. Well, that's pretty nice. Hey, happy that happened because Dame, remember, Bingo. in the NBA, yeah. he said, I won't go to Miami. They said, uh, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> we do not care where you want to go. You're going to Milwaukee. He's pumped to be on your team, though. Oh, Let's yeah. not get crazy. Last question here, Darren. Huh? Got to win a championship. Got to be pumped. Got to win a championship. Well, Jimmy Butler thinking... You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Tyler Euro is about to be back better than ever. <laughs> True. Too. I mean, Miami's got a squad. Let's not get crazy. Darius has a question Miami, for you. Miami always got a squad. But we were kind of talking about it earlier with uh, some of these stud wide receivers. You kind of mentioned moving Devontae around. Uh, mentioned also with Kyle Shanahan, him calling the shots. Well, calling the plays, but Brock actually calling the shots. If you're a coach for like a young quarterback specifically with like a stud wide receiver, when you're installing these passing concepts, is it? more so based off of the stud wide receiver, like where this guy is, let's get him the ball, and then obviously if he's not covered, we go somewhere else. Or is it more so, more so you're reading the coverages, you're reading these triangle reads. If you're a coach, how are you kind of, uh, I guess, balancing that? Yeah, that's a great question, DB. I think I think it's a, it's a combination of a few things. One, you have to uh, you know instill some good habits, which is going through progressions, uh, reading things out. Uh, the other is you have to remind this person that uh, – the reason this offense can be successful and be explosive is because of a player and B player and whoever else you really have to make a concerted effort to get the ball to. Yep. Um, I think there's ways of doing that. You move a guy around, 
Uh, you put a guy in the number one spot. Um, I believe for young quarterbacks, a lot of times, one of the easier ways of helping them get into a rhythm is to uh, give them pure progression plays. So there's, there's in the West Coast offense, there's three types of, of reads on plays. There's pure progression, there's progression with an option, and there's pick a side. So it basically means it's pure progression. You start with one side, you start with the n- number one guy, and number two, number three, check down. Progression with an option means usually you're in a three-by-one formation. You have some sort of progression to the three receiver side, and if you get a certain coverage, you can go to the backside guy as well. Pick a side means a lot of times you have a route concept with a two-high side and a route concept uh, for a one-high safety side. And so you've got to read the defense out and make the proper read and then, and then throw it to the proper side. Um, and when you're playing with young players, young quarterback especially, I think it's actually behooves them and gets them into a better flow. Oh, who's that? Sorry, I got another call. Um, to be able to give them pure progression plays where uh, there's less having to read something out, having to read a disguise out. We're just run, going to run 200 jet kangaroo, and I'm going to start with the slant every time, and then I'm going to work to – I'm going to check the post down the middle, and then I'm going to high level corner to the ender, and then I'm going to have my back on the outlet. You know, just simple plays to kind of get a guy into a rhythm I think can be really good. And then when you DB to answer the question in that situation – if you put your stud player in the number one spot, that means that that guy is always getting the first look. So it's a mm-hmm. greater opportunity, I think, for that person to uh, to be almost force-fed uh, more targets. You never want to be the first person in sprints. Always want to be the first option, though, you know, for <laughs> an offense, especially with what you just lined up there. So it's a pretty easy job, that quarterback thing, it sounds like. And I, anytime you start <laughs> explaining what you're doing every single freaking play, I think we all get incredibly compelled to say, bravo to these NFL quarterbacks. Unbelievable. But also it makes a lot of sense when some of them don't pan out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of shit going on, uh, especially in your world right now. I didn't know what that phone call was Pfizer or not to set up royalties. They're selling a jersey. Wow. They're right. thinking about selling a jersey. I don't know if you know this. Boom! Mr. Pfizer <laughs> coming right up from the people at Pfizer. If you get royalties from them for that jersey and you play for the Jets, mm. you'll be getting money from Johnson Johnson mm-hmm. and <laughs> Pfizer. Wow. Just something to think about. I think that is a business decision that you're going to have to make. But boy, Mr. Is that Pfizer real? really. Huh? Is that real? They're thinking about it. Yes. Research and development. Yep. They said R and D. R and D. Hard time. Yep. Bingo. Wow. <laughs> Seems what, what's the problem? <laughs> it was a good Boy. idea. They said good idea. Yeah, Brainstorm. You said it. <laughs> yeah, it's just fun. It's fascinating. <laughs> set it's set 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 I, mean, the, the, I mean, the triggering though was that not incredible last week? <laughs> People getting. <laughs> Getting absolutely triggered. Um, listen, you know, like I, and I saw, I saw some of it. Uh, I love. I mean, the Johnsons have been great to me, so I don't mind you call me Mr. Johnson and Johnson. Woody and Christopher and their families—they've been great. I don't play for the Johnson and Johnson Corporation. I play for the New York Jets. So I mean, I, you know, I made a tiny little joke about a guy shilling for, you know, potentially actually not potentially, but. For, you know, corrupt uh, oh, uh, company, and everybody kind of loses their mind. Oh, uh, all right. So, if it was the Johnson and Johnson Jets, if they had a name change, <laughs> would you play for the Johnson and Johnson Jets? <laughs> great question. Great follow-up. That's a great question. Uh, all right, something to think about. Just the way we'll get your answer next week. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get your answer next we'll next week. Uh, yeah, I think ESPN is going to cut this off before I start talking about. I will say, uh, hey, uh, I will say this. I think this is something that we should say, especially since we are still on ESPN. Uh, there's been a lot of things that have happened with this show in our short stint here yep. on ESPN. Mr. Pfizer being one of them. They haven't said a single thing to us. Not a single thing. It's almost like out of sight, out of mind. Also, if we start reaching out about things, it's going to become every single day. (laughs) So let's just save our time or whatever. They've not said a thing, to their credit, you know, or discredit, depending upon how you view it. True. I guess that is on you. They have been pretty hands-off this whole thing here. You don't think there's a guy back there with a little button? He's just like, 
When she starts talking about something, I'm going to push this. I'm going to cut the feed. I'm going to cut it. <laughs> His name's Richard Good. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. actually the one that is uh, he's muting the F word whenever it comes out on ESPN. Uh, on YouTube, obviously, we're good. But that was a concession that I made. I said, hey, listen, we will not say this because it will be on in cafes and diners. And there's a chance that, you know, the kids here. But everything else, we got to be able to say. And they're like, all right, deal. Sounds good. But Dick Good's the guy's name. Yep, yep. He's waiting for is it. Was that luck, truck, suck? What? Huh? what? <laughs> and it's, it's five seconds fudge. of that. Fudge? But, but I don't. Fu yeah, fudge. Fudge. RG3 said fu fu Fudging. Like bug. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that the only word he'll bleep. That's the only word he will mute. There's yeah. no other. Well, I mean, well, there's, there's a few. Oh, a few. Yeah. Not. Come on, AJ. Not that we say. Yeah, go ahead, test it, AJ. Don't need to explore. No, I'm just face. curious, like it's topics Ohio. or words. Like, what do you? What is he? If he decides what is good or not, like, if there's only one word, yeah. we we have a lot of a lot of. We have a lot of room to, to really explore that. <laughs> well, I don't think topics was ever really discussed. So Richard, Good, Richard Good's locked in on one word and one word alone. <laughs> That's right. And we <laughs> thought maybe there would be something at some point that would come up that they would send an email and I would have to sit in a Zoom call and explain why what we said was meant to be funny. Also, kind of true. <laughs> uh, you know, that, but that hasn't happened at all. So we appreciate them. But you should try to get some royalties off those jerseys if they sell. Because from what I saw in the reaction, there's a lot of people that are big Pfizer fans. Yep. Oh, yeah. I think they would buy those jerseys. That's what I saw in the reaction to you. Did you see that as well? I was kind of surprised. I'm like, Pfizer, pretty good brand. Mm -hmm. These people are loving it. Well, there's a lot of propaganda out there, you know. <laughs> a lot of propaganda out there. Right. I mean, listen, you know, Mr. Pfizer said he didn't think he would be in a vax war with me. Oh, boy. Didn't give me the facts for me. This ain't a war, homie. This is just conversation. But if you want to have some sort of uh, duel, debate, what? have me on the podcast. Come on the show. Let's have a conversation. Oh, oh let's okay. Do it. Pass it out. Let's do it like uh, like in uh, John Wick 4, right? So we both have a second. Nice. Right? So somebody to help us out. I'm going to take my man, RFK Jr. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. As an independent. Hell yeah. Right? And he can mm -hmm. have, you know, Tony Fauci or oh. some other farmer crap. And we can have a conversation about this. Okay. Well, I'm happy we got that sorted. Thought for sure you were going with Rogan. But True. obviously, <laughs> Dr. Joe Rogan, I apologize. Mm -hmm. But RFK Jr., not a bad kid. He's been at the forefront of this conversation on the <laughs> internet I have seen. Mm -hmm. Currently an independent. And could you imagine Fachi and Kelsey sitting mm. down across oh. from Aaron and <laughs> RFK Jr.? Appointment television. Ah, I know you have that 500-page report already that kind of got forgotten about in the whole thing. Hey, Pat, why That'd didn't you? Great. What's that? That'd be big ratings. Big ratings. Right oh, there. yeah. Yeah, and everybody would be really happy, too. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, that's, no that's, that's what those things really uh, do bring. But you know what does bring me happiness? Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. It's yeah. great seeing you. Great chatting with you. Feels like you're in great spirits. J.K. Dobbins talking shit to you is good news. And we hope the rest of the day is fantastic, pal. I'm going to go beat his ass in rehab here for the next three hours. That's so. what I'm talking about. And then get yourself ready for a debate yeah. about <laughs> vaccines. Yeah. That would be awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. What's wrong with your friend, AJ? What's wrong? You just set up a debate. Sounds like a great time, right? Let's throw some people together and debate <laughs> vaccines and Pfizer and everything. Like, what a great Friday night. <laughs> hey, to watch. Uh, Let's learn plug me in that too. room. Yes. Well, you're going to... You're going to, uh, what's it called? It? What's the uh, moderator? Moderator. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Do you know how mad society would be? You and AJ moderating. If I was the one moderating that entire <laughs> thing. People, society would be so mad if I was in there. I just want to be a fly on the wall, just kind of watching yep. it all go down. Because I will say, for those that don't know, if you're living on one side of the fence, the other side is just as passionate as you are about the complete opposite of what you're saying. Yeah. And I don't know politics that well, but I do see my <laughs> mentions whenever the politics get dropped into it. And buddy, these people are never going to see eye to eye with these people. Nope. And I don't think any of these people understand how these people feel this way at all. So until death, they are going to hate these people. Mm -hmm. And until death, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. They're doing this. That's why we try to stay out of it, but boy, Aaron loves getting in there. Yes, he does. He loves, he loves getting right. Last year, or uh, 2020, with the whole I'm immunized situation, so he was actually getting buried from both sides at one point. Yeah, it was tough. From the entire globe. And in doing so, obviously, the tank top doofus, who's also on the screen mm -hmm. while this is all happening, getting murdered, I'm like, who would ever want to dabble in this world? Never. But seems like we found... 
at least four guys yeah, right. that want to dabble in it and do their thing. Travis Kelsey, I think he's just like, man, what are you? Yeah. What happened? Yeah. Just flu, it was a flu shot. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> flu shot. He's trying to help. You know, are they going to ask him? Are they going to ask him? Hey, are you, so are you going to call Fouch and try to debate Aaron Rodgers? Like, is that going to be his post-practice presser? Travis is like, they're taking pictures of me smoking on my way to work. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, in the morning right What's now. What's going on? I got Aaron Rodgers Six? wanting to debate me and Fauci, you know, because of the Mr. Pfizer situation, and then he's still got to go on and battle a low ankle sprain and still become the greatest of all time in the middle of a Super Bowl run. Short week. Good luck to all parties. Yeah. Good luck to all parties out there. Travis that smoking happens. cigs on the way to work? Yeah, he's just smoking a cig, I think. I think yeah, he rolled awesome. a... Yeah, that's what makes him gritty. Backwoods, so. I think. Yeah, yeah, I think he rolled oh, a... Oh, the honey things? Is tobacco. That yeah, he rolled a tobacco, yeah. I think. A tobacco cigarette. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. A little cigarette. Yeah. Start it was not cig a weed, no. which a lot of people were saying. He, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't Never. do that. Taylor wouldn't approve. I actually heard he rolled up Zins. And he was smoking Zins. Oh, so nicotine. it's not even. That's actually a That's new cool. trend on the top. Bad idea. It wasn't even tobacco. You know, it's just nicotine. Like so. crack. <laughs> His whole life's being tracked right now. The things you do for love. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. The things we do for love. Honestly, show's over. <laughs> right there. That show is over. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nailed it. The show's still on. <laughs> show's over. Okay. It's a good way to wrap it. <laughs> I don't know if the show's over. He said he was still getting counted down. I, think I see it, commercial right here in front of me. Yeah, okay. I, I had a new guy in my ear there at the end there. Oh, nice. New we guy. enjoy that. ESPN people have to hate us. Like Randy, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Scott. Randy Scott was not happy about Mr. Pfizer getting brought up on the, uh, on our particular program. No, he's not going to be happy about that either. Yeah, well, he, he called <laughs> yeah. for a debate. Yeah. Randy's not going to be happy. I, I think I heard another anchor potentially say, you know, kind of take a shot at us taking up TV time pretty much mm -hmm. at the network and everything like that. Hey, Randy, just read the prompter, okay? Geez, <laughs> there's no reason That's to say that. That is Whoa. Nick Moraldo. Can you please put the open back up on the screen right now? <laughs> not with Lou Holtz's voice. But just the open, the intro thing, the, uh, the... So, Randy, what needs to be reminded here, this runs, the opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily reflect the beliefs of their peers, that would be the boys here in this situation, their boss, that would be me, uh -huh. or ESPN. So what Nick just said is not how I feel, Randy. Right. Just why, and we, that Any is clearly stated, that is clearly stated. Yes. But Nick does feel that way. He does. And that's a shame. So, Randy, maybe you and Nick sit down. No thanks. At a table. Have a debate with a friend. Own. He'll have yeah. our... <laughs> It was it was it was nice to find out that Aaron's a registered independent like me and Connor are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Amen. Yeah. That makes sense. I'm sure that's not a part of the whole hatred thing, you know. Right. He does lean into it though. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. loves it. He might as well. Yep. People I think are it gonna... feeds his Achilles. I think he he heals him. So instead of the dolphins he grows stronger. fornicating, it's yeah. actually let's go stir some shit up yeah. with this vax crowd. Mm -hmm. Cuz remember in his eyes he was yeah. heavily chastised. Oh, Public yeah. enemy number one. For the whole thing. He was the face of people that are not getting vaccinated, even though the whole world was saying, hey, we get vaccinated, we can all get back to life. So he was getting slaughtered. Yeah. Like in his world, he was getting slaughtered. Not like he wasn't injured. He wasn't, you know what I mean? He's like nothing that serious. But he feels as if, you know, I assume next 10, 15, because we told him, like, nobody's really talking about vaccines right now. Mm -hmm. no. you know? And he's like, oh, is that right? Well, nobody was really getting talked to the way I was getting talked to <laughs> yeah. about vaccines a couple years ago. I think is what went through his mind, not 100% sure. AJ, you know a little bit closer. I don't know if this one's just going to go quietly into the night with this entire no. thing with what he experienced. Nope. Yeah, no, Nothing's going quietly into the night. I mean, yeah, he... You saw him even at the end of it when J.K. pops in there. That was awesome. He, he, he throws a dig J.K. So he's like, yeah, good good job. You're almost walking. He says to him, you, I don't know if you could hear him, but he said yeah, that yeah. as J.K. was leaving. You're almost walking. Like, okay, I'm way ahead of you is what he's trying to tell him. And then he finished it with, I'm going to go beat the shit out of J.K. Yeah. Dobbins <laughs> in rehab or whatever. How about in the middle of real answer about Nathaniel Hackett going back to Broncos? You hear J.K. Dobbins in the back yeah. getting hyped <laughs> and making noise. I thought it was hard not to laugh because – this is an answer a lot of people are going to want to hear. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And at that exact moment, J.K. Dobbins was doing something that was awesome mm -hmm. right on the other side of the wall and couldn't contain himself. It's that type of energy and juice, yeah. though, that you need whenever you're getting back to health because yeah. that is not a fun process at all. And it's great to be doing it with somebody else, just like working out in the offseason. You know, it's good to have somebody else there pick you up the days you aren't um, up. And then, I mean, what other show do you get, you know, a little live insight on some guys rehabbing? You know, yeah. Two, two stars, that's sweet. NFL stars. Like, that's something that's Don't ask those and, questions. <laughs> Okay, that just makes too much sense, but our show's too dumb, and we have no cooth. Well. And 
this show is now going to be, as said on this mm. show, mm -hmm. Aaron Rodgers, RFK Jr., yeah. <laughs> Travis Kelsey, Fox. Tony Fox. Tony Fox. Yeah. Lock it in. Find Leading a CNN good tonight. Memes. What a joke. Let's get to a break. We, uh, we always find ourselves in the middle of everything. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. That's one way to look at it. <laughs> that is how I will always look at it. I love that. Shirt today is really cool, though. Thank you. I appreciate that. What is it? A couple wolves in front of a oh, red moon. Wolves are awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got Rich Paul in the next hour. Oh, hell yeah. Pumped about that. His book, Lucky Me, A Memoir of Changing the Odds, is coming out. Is coming out to, is today, this, this yesterday. Week? It's been out. This book. When it's if it's when it's available, it's available. Pre-order right now. Today. Or buy it today. today. It's out today. today. It's out today. Yeah. Get this book today. today. Get this book today. That's we're pretty good at moving books around here. Mm -hmm. We enjoy good books. So the fact that we're getting a chance to uh to talk to another author, also potentially greatest hustler in American history. Okay? Goes from selling authentic jerseys out of his trunk of his car to owning an agency that has negotiated over four billion dollars in deals. And I don't even think he's 50 yet, right? No, no he's like no. 41. Oh, no. He's young. Very young, very. It's a good hustle, too. Do you have any good, nice Michelin S throwbacks? No, back the only no? sweet thing I had was a starter jacket that was cool. Mm -hmm. And then just t-shirts that I won at soccer tournaments. And then I cut them off. Yeah, all right. That was a good hustle back then, though. You had good jerseys? You were a big jersey guy? Oh, I wasn't a big jersey guy, but a few few nice throwbacks. Who do you have to wear? Who'd you wear? Oh. Like, I feel like I a had... Randy Moss jersey at any time would have been yep. good anywhere. Place. Good prime, a good throwback. Prime, Falcons, Cowboys, uh, Niners, any of those. Uh, White chocolate. So, allegedly, the uniform or the jersey that linked Rich Paul and LeBron James was a Warren Moon jersey. That's yeah. right. Yep. Those were tough. That Lauren, uh, LeBron James saw and was like, whoa. Who's this guy? You got that. And then that's how they linked up. Yeah. Sold them a Rams Joe Namath and a Lakers Magic Johnson. And then whenever they signed back with the Lakers, probably a full, yeah, full yep. entire thing. We'll talk to him in about 15 minutes. We'll cover everything else happening around the football world. Also, hockey's tonight. Hell yeah. Let's go. Hockey is tonight. Yep. Pittsburgh Penguins are welcoming the next generation of greatness into the NHL with a big fat L. Tonight, the Pittsburgh Penguins beat Connor Bedard in the Chicago Blackhawks 10 0 <laughs> in front of Iceberg and a sold out PPG Paints Arena. Damn. I have no idea if that's true. Would be really cool if it was, though. Be a friend, tell a friend something nice. Take five. Bye. Bye. What an honor. What a dream. Being a part of game day was a joke. Being on the field for this is a joke. We continue to live the dumbest life of all time. We are live from an empty Mercedes-Benz Stadium. All the off-season workouts, all the sickness, all the puking, all the commitment, all the dedication. <laughs> we got four teams left, coach. What's the vibe of that locker room getting ready for this game? We're going to swing as hard as we can in this game, and CJ's our leader, and he's going to lead the way. Hell yeah. Yeah, oh. we're going to try to make the most dumb television on earth this evening live sure. from this field right here in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Darius Butler, yes, nine-year NFL vet, played at UConn. That team stinks, but they're coming oh, back. Okay. Stanford yeah, Stadium here. Back. And this man right here wearing a wolf t-shirt underneath his sport coat. Mm -hmm. He works for me full-time. But what are you excited about this evening, Connor? I mean, Pat, like you said, I have the IQ of a goldfish, so I'm not really taking all this in strictly because there's so much. The moment is huge. You know where you make your money, and this, and this college level is the red area. Georgia number one. 120 is where Ohio State is ranked, which is nuts. Mm -hmm. Max Duggan is a dog. Let Duggan cook. Okay. Connor, Hit good job, Vegas. Vegas. Hey, 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 oh, boys. Kirk, we say dumb stuff on the internet. Every day. Yeah, don't be out there, Coach. What? What? Tiffany can cover him. What? In the boots. Clear on your guys. Come on, you're on heels again. I'm about it. I'm about it. Didn't say fuck, didn't say shit. <laughs> I was close, but I didn't do it. That's a win. That's Let's a go. win. Right? Oh, oh, that's fun. It's electric. Look at this, man. Look at this. Hey, coach, I don't know if you headbutted one of your guys or not, but. <laughs> hey, cut yourself, Shane. You are awesome. I got, I got a six year old son, man. I mean, it's a. <laughs> They're going to have to rely upon those. Dogs. Dogs. Kate's over the tight end for Ohio State. Yeah. Yeah. Number eight. He's like fourth generation farmer. Sponsored by John Deere. Yeah. Okay, and they don't just put that deer on anybody. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Oh, 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 oh
There's going to be billionaires barking, okay? There's going to be billionaires barking, grown folks in khakis, barking in unison. Wow! That's got to become a thing next year. No, it's serious. <laughs> bro, 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 bro. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> you alright? You alright? You alright? Yeah, help him up. Help him up. Spill anything? Nope. Spilled your phone. Could have been worse. Could have been much worse. The college football playoffs are about to kick off in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh. My name is uh, Peyton Manning. That's an Ohio fucking wet dream, not just a dream. Dude. Did you see AQ Shipley stacked on top of Q? What top of pole? I feel a shot coming. Sorry, Taylor. Oh, I told oh, you. fake punt in the fourth quarter is being described by a lot of people as maybe the greatest timeout in the history of college football. You know, we've had two punts faked on us this year. We are very aware and know that people are going to try to steal possessions. Connor, what quarter is it? I believe, Pat, if I check my left hand, it is the fourth quarter. Snap down, hold, the kick is... Looks good. Get it, catch oh, it. Oh, yeah. No! Well, I, I would be remiss <laughs> if I didn't acknowledge your great catch under the goalpost. I want you to know when I yes. saw you make that, yes. I, thought, I thought for a second, is he going to return it? I had envisions of kick six when you <laughs> caught that ball, so don't do that to us uh, anymore. But. Yes, 
every day. It is somehow this time. Wow, what a game. Let's put on a drink. It was a good time, man. From all of us to all of you, Happy New Year. Enjoy the hell out of your evening. Let's go to the fence. Let's go to Dan in Connecticut. Lovely place here on the Five Energy phone line. What's going on, Dano? Oh, what's up, Pat McAfee? Dan, you are too young to listen to this show. I can tell through. I think. Well, how old? I'm not are you? Dan. I am Owen. Man, Owen, how old are you? He's so different. I am at eight and a half. Oh, eight and a half. If you're okay. telling us you're half age, you're too young to be listening. That's a record. <laughs> Wait. What's on your mind, pal? What do you want to talk about, Owen? Um, I want to talk about how inspiring this show is and how you're inspiring this whole entire world with how you're talking about sports and how you're talking about your life experience. Thank you, Owen. Owen, thank you. Love you, Owen. Thank you, Owen. I'm taking one. And also, fuck Boston. I will let Owen know. If you're still listening, Owen, Can't you're inspiring. Him. Best kid ever. Owen, the way you talk about sports is inspiring. Can't say that. Yes. I, I didn't know eight and a half oh. could do that. Is wow. That, shout out, Owen. Me. That time. Go, yeah. Owen. Hey, Owen. New generation in Connecticut, I guess. He's making me feel good, too, by the way. He's yeah. making me feel yeah. good, making the show feel good. He was talking us up. He was hyping us up, and then boom. Yeah. A little, was this Aristotle's brother? A little misdirection from Aristotle's <laughs> yeah. brother, Owen, at eight yeah. and a half there. That was I'd, awesome. I'd say he put his balls on your forehead, but I don't think they dropped yet. So. <laughs> hey. Why? Let's go. This show sticks, and the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. The all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers. You pick! Damn it! <laughs> Your friend, tell a friend something nice could change their life. We want that! We want that! Sports! 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 Sport. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode, the Thunderdome, on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. Hour 3 of this program starts now! Football! We almost replaced it for hockey, but we've been doing pretty well with football being chanted yeah. immediately upon the beat dropping. Football is the topic every single day because football never uh, uh, stops. Speaking of football, this man won it in college, Why? won it in the pros, Why? is the all-time leading tackler for the Green Bay Packers, and the current president of Ohio is A.J. Hawk. A.J., this hour obviously on YouTube. Feel free to say fuck and everything else that you want to say in this yeah. hour. Yeah. Thank you. If I if I need to, I will. I appreciate that. Yeah, George Kittle, all he wanted for his birthday was one thing. Of course. That was just yeah. yesterday. All he wanted was one thing. Remember, he said, oh, yeah. actually, for my birthday, all I want is for AJ to say it for me. Mm -hmm. And you said, nah, I ain't doing it. I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying, hey, life ain't easy, kid. Is that what you said? <laughs> I don't know. Just in the moment, I didn't feel like saying it. That's about it. You don't get everything you want, even exactly. at the age of 30. Yeah. Even after scoring three touchdowns <laughs> on Sunday Night Football. AJ is always teaching people lessons in making us better. That's why you're the president of Ohio, AJ. Thank you, yeah. The Thank Talks you. Table yep. is here at Boston Connor and at Ty Schmidt. Nine-year NFL vet, host of the Man to Man podcast and everything DB, which will be coming up later in this hour. Darius J. Butler is hey, here. Baby, baby, baby. Also, one half of the hammer, Don. Cowboys turn digs is here. Hammer Don. Don is a gambling show that is live out of this office every single Monday through Friday. They go through all the bets that they think are good and they think are bad. They've been running now for multiple years and the boys actually have a higher hit rate than lose rate, which is incredibly impossible in the Entire sphere of gambling, but more specifically sports gambling. Well, right. So the boys have been crushing it. And right now, Tone, five weeks into the NFL season, we have some trends that we need to be looking at whenever we're putting our hard-earned dollars on something football-related. Tone, what do we know and where should we be looking? The most fun stat that I saw today mm -hmm. on the Twitterverse and around the internet when I was looking up these, um, this is the best start for the public since 2005. Hey, let's go, us! Wow. Let's go, us! So 44-27 and three uh, is the public, and that is basically they just looked at who, if the public was on more than 50% of the whatever side, 44, 27, and three. There's some teams you should not be gambling on. That would be the Giants, who are 0 and 5 ATS, the Panthers, who are 0 4 and 1 ATS, and the Broncos, who are 0 4 and 1 ATS. And I think a big reason why the public is doing so well 
Niners are four and one ATS. What? Dolphins are four and one ATS. What? Eagles are four and one ATS. What? And the Lions are four and one ATS. Those are all preseason teams that got that people liked, so they came out and covered. That's why people are winning. Favorites are 37, 34, and 5. Road teams are 39, 32, and 5. Oh, a little edge there. Okay. And then the unders are 44 and 34. And those wow. are all against the spread there? Yes. Uh, yes for they the are. 39 Sorry, yeah. and everything yep. like that? Love that. Did we learn anything right there, AJ? People are going on the road better than they ever have in the past. And also, the darlings of the NFL media and the NFL yeah. fan base have performed very well as opposed to just getting by early. I love that the people are winning, AJ. I do. Now, it makes me worry, though, for do all the books start to change how they're going to make the lines now? They, I would assume they adjust to try to get ahead again, right? Well, I think it comes down to a lot. We What was that? Last week we looked it up as far as margin of victory goes, and this is the largest it's been in a few years or whatever. So all while. these big favorites are also covering. Like the Dolphins last mm -hmm. week were – were 11 or 12 and a half in cover. Yeah. The Lions were 10 and covered. When big favorites cover, the public normally does well. Darius, you're putting bets together for people, right? How are you yeah. doing this particular year? Uh, not so good. Okay. One and four. One and four? One and four. So Buddy, game. we've been there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not easy. It's tough. Not, easy. Not at all. Not easy at all. We pivot away from betting trends in the NFL that will hopefully make us better and smarter gamblers. We appreciate you, Tony. Baby, Tony. Tony. And let's go to a man who I believe, after you read his book, will inspire you to go do the damn thing. At the age of 21, this guy was selling jerseys out of the trunk of his car. Now, he owns an agency that has negotiated over $4 billion in contracts. My God. Fucking dog. Went from playing dice to navigating the entire NBA and the NFL. The author of Lucky Me, a memoir of changing the odds, which is available right meow. Ladies and gentlemen, Rich Paul. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Pat, what's up? How you guys doing? Hey, fantastic. Thank you for joining us. I know you've been on a lot of runs here. You've been talking to a lot of people. We appreciate you taking time to come chat with some dumbasses. Yep. There's only one Pat McAfee, though, so it's all good. Hey, that's too many, some people think. But the fact <laughs> that this got you on the show, I'm very grateful for that. Let's dive in. I read up on you a lot. Now, I don't think... I've known the full backstory about you. I've known that you've existed, though, and been dominating, if that makes sense. So as I was looking into this to kind of talk to you about your book, you're, hey, you might be the greatest hustler in the history of America, from dice <laughs> and selling jerseys to now being a guy who owns an agency with over $4 billion in negotiated contracts only at the age of 41. Do you see yourself way, that way? Do you think because you are a hardworking hustler that you're able to navigate everything? How have you made it all look so easy, seemingly from the outside looking in through this whole process? Yeah, well, you know, looks can be deceiving for sure. But um, no, just through hard work, I think, you know, you, when you read the book, some of the things you read in there is what shaped me. And we didn't have time to celebrate wins per se. We didn't have time to be complacent. You had to make a way. It wasn't, it wasn't a plan. I didn't have an estate or anything like that or trust. I had to, I had to make a way. And so in this, this position I'm in today, it's the same, it's the same mentality. You know, it's no complacency. Uh definitely an ultimate hustler. But there's some great ultimate hustlers out there as well. And so yes. I just want to continue down that path. But more importantly, I wrote the book to give that insight, to give that, to share those experiences with people that may feel as if there may not be a chance for them to be successful and to help them understand the importance of decision making and helping them understand that you don't just have to learn out of a textbook or you don't have to have a certain degree to be successful. And so um, hopefully as as people read the book, they take they take that with them. Go ahead, AJ. What about now? I know early on you said you didn't have time to celebrate wins or anything like that. Are you able to look around every once in a while and realize, like, wow, this is a pretty cool thing that I have built around me and that you're continuing to grind every day? I beat the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but yeah, it, but not in a celebratory way. I, you know, I celebrate the growth of other other people within my within my companies. Well, you know, I started the company. It was just myself and a young lady named Fair Left, and we, we played every role. We played, we were communications, we were marketing, we were client services. And then to see some of the people that started with us in that office today have their own clients. And, and I don't have to call and triple, double and triple check about things being done the right way. They've taken the bull by the horns. So that growth is something I'm extremely excited about. But, yeah, I, I do look around, AJ. And I'm appreciative for sure. 
uh, I'm thankful for sure. And and obviously growing up with a dad like I had in my community, I was lucky to have that, the good and the bad of it, because you need all of it to be complete, to be whole. And so, yeah, and obviously um, a big football fan. So, you know, I played every sport, thought I was going to be a state champion. I mean, I'm sorry, an NFL or NBA player I wasn't, but I was a state champion. I won the first, I won the last state championship in St. John's Arena and the first in the shot. Hey, does that is that good? I don't know. You tell me. What's, That's great. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm talking for you. I'm talking for you there. Yeah, 100%. Which sports, That's did, you, great. Which sports did you play? In basketball. I went to a school called Cleveland Benedictine, but I'm from a school. I'm from an area called Glenville that produced Ted Ginn Jr., Dante Whitner, Marshawn Lattimore, Troy Smith, Pierre Woods, Frank Clark, you know, uh, um, um, Hardy that's on the Jets. The list goes on and on and on. So I, I come from that richness of, of, of sports for sure. Well, let's talk about you cracking into the sports world. I mean, you or the football world. You have Jalen Hurts, Judon, Miles Garrett. Who else? Quinn Williams. Yes. Quinn and Hop. Quinn and Williams. Quincy Williams. Brees Hall. Bryce Hall. Jermaine Johnson. Chase Young. Um, Rich. The, yeah. Rich. Those aren't just nobodies. And and obviously you run the Devontae entire. Devontae Smith. No, those are real guys. Our rookies this year: Brian Branch, uh, Bijan Robinson, Will Anderson. You know, Ooh, to name a few. Yeah, we got, we got, we just getting started though. But I have great agents on the football side too. They're doing their thing. Yeah, I'd say. But also, like, you run the NBA. Okay, every offseason the NBA, it's like, all right, what's Clutch doing? <laughs> Clutch is running the NBA. Then for you to come into the NFL and just do the exact same thing, why do you think you guys are having so much success so quickly in the NFL and then also across the board? Obviously, in the NBA, being associated with LeBron is a good thing. Like, I think we would all recognize that. But your business sense is much more than just being in the vicinity of LeBron James. Why do you think you've been able to kind of crack this agency game as opposed to maybe another business? I think because I think athletes always look for what we have to offer, but it just wasn't available to them. Um, you know, and, and we all know, I mean, AJ, you went through the process and hiring an agent and things like that. Yours was probably a little bit different what you was looking for. But what we when I started the company, what I saw in the space was there wasn't anything. There wasn't a brand that was our brand is culturally recognized today I and mean, globally recognized today. There wasn't agents that had the capability of not just focusing on negotiating the deal and the transaction, but also developing the player and the person within. And so I wanted to build something that really focused on that. I think basketball was craving for it then. And now football is starting to crave for it because, you know, if you, if you go to these certain schools, they're not, these guys don't know that, I can sign with another agent. They think, oh, I can only sign with the agent that represents my coach. And the coach puts them in the room early and they meet the parents. And this is this whole game that, that, that they've been playing for a long time. But we're coming to disrupt that for sure. Yeah, and I think, hey, I think it's working. Mm -hmm. Hey, I would say it's worth it, uh, which is why I have so much respect for what you've built. Because anybody that can blaze a new trail, disrupt an old school narrative, and do it differently than anybody's ever done it before is certainly a reason to read a damn book, I would say. Ty has a question about some of those paths, though. Yeah, speaking of disrupting that, uh, Rich, you mentioned how, you know, like you want to show people that you don't necessarily need a degree to be successful. And obviously with the Rich Paul rule that the NCAA tried to institute a couple years ago with, you know, basically making it so that you had to have a, a degree in order to, you know, talk to some of these players and all that kind of stuff. And I think since then they've kind of backed away on that because you basically said, like, Hey, this is bullshit. That's not how we're doing things. But are you still kind of getting some of that pushback from other agents because you didn't come up the traditional way? Or is it now the type of yeah. thing where it's like, hey, look, we're here, so it really doesn't matter how you think of how we got here? Yeah, it's a different. You, you definitely get the pushback, but it's in different, it's in different form now. You saw the anonymous uh poll that came out on Hoops Hype. You know, if you look at Hoops Hype, sometime they will they let the other agents double dip clients to, to be further up the, the, the ladder and things like that. Um, but then you also have the, oh, he's going to own a team with LeBron or every day is something new. But I also find it as, a um, you know, some some in some in a weird way, it's a respect that they have to to give you when you do the work. You know, we don't really talk about it. 
we just do the work and, and let the work speak for itself. And so I come from that. My father instilled that in me. He got up and went and opened a store every day at six in the morning, rain, sleet, hell or snow, you know, in, the, in Cleveland, we could have some cold winters. Oh. And so um, I don't think, I think that's part of the industry though. Um, I don't respect a lot of the agents in our industry just because of some of the things they do and how they do it. Me uh, because I don't, I come from a place where, you do certain things, there's a consequence that comes behind it. They don't really come from that. They come from a place where they can go into a, a, a family living room and talk about you as if they actually know you because they're trying to get the client and say any and everything and just make up lies. But then when they see you, they speak. That don't work where I'm from. You know, we don't really, we don't really. Yeah, but it's like not that. personal. It's business. Remember, that's what they always try to say whenever that type of stuff happens. It's all personal. It's just business. It's like, well, you made it pretty personal. Just, just would like yeah. to let you know yeah. that that you've made it pretty personal in this entire thing. And talking about personal, you and LeBron have been tight for a long time, and you alluded to it there. Well, people are saying I'm not going to be in the aging game long because I'm going to go own a team. Obviously, you have to think about that being a potential reality, right? Because there's only. So many owners no. in professional sports. Have you thought about no, that? No, I don't. I don't, don't want to own a team. That that'll hinder me. You know, I, I you know, I, I I plan on diversifying my portfolio and uh, you know attaching different verticals of the business. I don't have enough money to own a team, so let's just start there. You know, <laughs> I don't do any faking or front. So, um, but ultimately, if LeBron went to own a team, great. Um, maybe he'll listen to me in terms of how to uh, build a roster the right way. Yeah, AJ, go ahead, Paul. Uh, can you explain the differences between representing, say, a football player in the NFL and an NBA player? I know from being a football player, we feel like NBA players, there's obviously fewer of them, and the stars kind of drive the ship. They run the show, and they have much more power, I feel like, at times than football players. Well, I don't know if it's – see, the whole player empowerment thing, AJ, is a, is a little misleading. What I tried to lead with is from an education perspective. I led with educating the guys on the business – more so than anything, um, and to understand you do have options, you do have flexibility, you don't only have to do it a specific way. I think what gives the most power is the guaranteed contracts. And you're starting to see more in the NFL, and I would love to see m most contracts be guaranteed in the NFL, basically the, the risks that you get, especially with the risks you guys take and things of that nature. But the difference is there's less ego on the NFL side because you're one of 53. And as you know, it's 11 men on, on each side of the ball. The quarterback obviously is going to always get the credit, but they always get the blame as well. And then, you know, the defense, you have to depend on each other a lot more. And there's very few people playing both sides of the ball. You know, Travis is doing it in college. Dion did it. So, uh, you know, Dion played two sports. Some people did it. I forgot who else did did it play both Pac sides Man of the ball? Both a little bit. Pac, Pac, Man, Pac Man played both sides of the ball a little bit. Yeah. So, but it's it's just a different perspective. And here's the other thing: there's no AAU in football, right? AAU creates a ton of bad habits for our kids. So by the time they get to become professionals, they've only dealt with people that did what? That really pretty much put this this um um this yes man mentality around them and, Bubble. and it's Bubble. just they all they did was feed their ego feed their ego feed their ego so by the time they become pros it's about me and only me so now you have to help them tear that wall if they're willing tear that wall down you still have to have ego within the house but it's not the foundation of the house if that makes sense oh hey that was a bar right there. Oh, yeah. I assume that's in the I book. got bars, Pat. What's <laughs> going on with all this Pittsburgh? You, I mean, I, I talked to Tom Warner this morning. I know he's in, 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 in Pittsburgh now because it's open up the NHL season. Yeah. But then I saw a Pittsburgh Steelers uh, helmet on somebody else's death. Yeah. I love Mike Tomlin. That's my guy. My uncle uh, was married to my aunt. Uh, uh, Bill Johnson back in the day played for the Steelers from Michigan State. Okay. But I'm a Browns fan. I, I think you guys know that. Yeah. So I was just checking to make sure. Yeah, and Cleveland State. So, so <laughs> you know, from Pittsburgh, we said Cleveland State. You said, oh, it's cold in the winter. I said, Ball. We know. It's such a similar city. Hey, Pittsburgh. It was the break, Pat. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Pittsburgh and Cleveland, <laughs> though. 
Like so, I know, so I know. similar, so, so similar. And then since birth, hate each other. Love it. It's like a beautiful thing. <laughs> they don't have that much anymore. I wish it would happen uh, more often, actually. Uh, Con man. I rock with Pittsburgh, though. I rock with Pittsburgh. Hey, I rock with Cleveland, too. Hey, Cleveland, super windy. Jeez Louise. Let's slow it down. But that, <laughs> that Jack's Casino downtown. Oh, yeah. It's like four <laughs> floors. Winners walking out of there. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, not a lot of winners walking out of the Pittsburgh casino. No. The Cleveland casino, a lot of smiles coming yep. out of Jack's casino. You don't see that in Pittsburgh. <laughs> they got the game cooked. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Rich, a big part of the NBA contracts are kind of like the uh, escalators and the max contracts based off of, you know, all pro NBA and some of those type of awards, MVP and yeah. stuff. Now and years of service as well. Yeah, yeah, it, bingo. Ahead. And now yeah. that they have changed the rules for, you know, you have to play 65 games minimum to qualify for, you know, those type of awards. Does that change NBA contracts at all? Because obviously if it affects the Supermax, it's going to affect how much money guys are making. So do contracts in the NBA now have to have different type of standards to hit? Like maybe if it was 65 for the award, maybe a Supermax contract would only be 60 or 55 games. Is that happening right now or no? No, I don't think they'll go that far. I mean, look, even before this whole ordeal, you had the fact that, you know, that some people voted for all NBA, which affected the escalator as well. And so that wasn't ideal as well, because you had people voting that a lot of players probably thought shouldn't have a vote. Um, but what I think it'll do is I think, you know, the league is trying to protect the integrity of the game and stop stars from sitting out so much. Um, it's tough. I don't think guys want to sit out. I think teams try to protect the players from themselves. It's a lot of data being done and analytics being done on just the body and, and injury. And, and, and so, you know, teams have more insight now than ever before, but I also think teams practice less now than ever before. So there's a balance, you know, we practice, you got to practice for your body to get used to that wear and tear. Um, but also there's too much basketball being played by our youth. And so what people don't understand is, yeah, a player may get injured in year four, year three or whatever, five, but they play so much basketball. There's so much AAU and, and it's all chasing these rankings, but the rankings really don't necessarily matter. And, and, and that's being proven over and over and over again. If you have the talent, they're going to find you. And so there's been a lot of players go top 20 from smaller schools and now guys are starting not to pick the blue blood schools they're going to wherever is going to put them in the best position so i don't think it'll necessarily um they won't lower it for that i i do think for the guys that now care about that stuff the guys that's made four five hundred six hundred million they're not going to if they sit out they're going to sit out they're not caring about making all nba and things like that for the younger guys they'll care more about it because they haven't really made their money yet. Hey, whenever they're making those rule changes, it feels like the NBA has a better relationship with the players. And obviously you and LeBron started this whole thing together. How much are you asked about whenever they're changing these types of things? How much are you a part of the NBPA and conversations and pitching and finding the place that we're at right now with the NBA? There's a small group of us at the NBA and the NBPA. Um, you know, I don't, they may ask your opinion. I don't know if they, they necessarily care until I don't want to, I don't want to think like it's this whole power thing. Um, but if you're coming from a place of, in, you know, if, if it's real insightful and, and they, and the Intel, they, they really value it. Uh, I'm asked about a lot of things from both sides, from the league and, and from the union. And, but I handle it, handle it in a respectful way, but it's a small group of us that's been around for a while. I yeah, you run the NBA. We know. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I no, said. I whatever. Think the yeah, agents, you do. I do you think do. the agents need to be more involved on, on a lot of the decisions, um, especially from from the union side. And we, we talk a lot about that. But but both the union and the league does spend a lot more time uh, in a very informative way to get to get insight and opinions. Yeah, it feels like they have a better relationship than the NFL and the NFL people yeah. for sure. But they should be taking your opinions and ideas. You're working with half the league. It feels like at this point, Darius has a question for you, Rich. Yeah, but you've been uh, pretty much you know synonymous with the NBA when it come to agent, just like you know Scott Boris and like the MLB. You talked about diversifying your portfolio. Yeah, Scott's question, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's still doing. I think at like seventy. How long do you see yourself doing the agent thing? I, I would assume not that long. And then I got to ask you a basketball question too. I think you mentioned it on 
maybe Gill's show about LeBron. He was, you know, first player to have kind of a 24-7 news cycle. Who carries yeah. who carries the lead kind of, you know, once he's out of it? Pretty, you know, in a couple years, a few years here, I would assume. Five, ten years, 11 years. Yeah, well, to, okay, so to, to answer your first question, as long as my heart's still in it, I love it. I love teaching. I love seeing guys develop. And we, look, as a company, we've grown. I mean, we don't announce everything, but we represent – the teams now we did, we just did the, the Utah Jazz patch deal be prior to them we did the we did the uh, Chicago Bulls um oh, yeah. you know going into media rights naming rights all that all that type of stuff we have our WNBA side and every day I get up as well as being an agent I'm looking at buying businesses adding different <laughs> different agents as well to continue to build out our group so um, that that is part of my hey you're fucking awesome rich rich you're awesome CEO hat in my in my UTA sports po head hat and then as far as the um as far as the just the the 24 7 a new cycle approach and who's going to be the face when when, when lebron is, is no longer playing i think it'll be a balanced attack but probably led by if, if steph is still around and still wants to play i mean he's a great a great example for our league but i think it's a balanced attack because you could you can be great in different ways like draymond is great in different ways. He may not have the points, but he represents the league in a different way. But I think it'd be across the board. We got some great young talent across the board. You see what JT is in 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 in, in Boston, Darius Garland in Cleveland, you know, Trey and DeJounte in Atlanta, Tyrese Maxey in, 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 in Philly, De'Aaron Fox has took has taken the Kings. They're no longer just a win on your schedule anymore. You know, when you look at that, um, I think guys like Fred Van Fleet that helped turn Turn around the 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 um, the Rockets and their culture, and so when you just look at the balance throughout our league, there's a lot of things taking place. Uh, so I, the league is in a good place. We got Wimby came this year. Chet Holmgren is now back back healthy on on OKC, and they they got a good team. And so I just I just love the game of basketball. You will see guys move around uh, as well. We don't know what's going to happen in a place like Chicago. Do they keep their team together? With, with both Zach and, and DeMar DeRozan or, or what happens there, uh, depending on how they probably get off to start the season. So uh, what the Bucks have done, is, it's just a it's just an exciting time. And that's why I'm doing all this media now so I can get – I got to go back out and uh, for the next two weeks when the first of the season starts, I like to go to games and sit there and critique my guys. And I know the game of basketball and football. I love it. So it's not – I'm not a stat sheet agent. I don't just look and look at the highlights and then text a client and be like, you crushed it tonight. No, I, I know if you came off that screen the wrong way or if you let a guy look, go left and his dominant um, um, hand is left and if you, you're not on a help line or ball line, you're just stuck in no man's land, you get beat back door. Like, I know the game, so uh, I enjoy it. Hell yeah. I'm sure they enjoy that as well. Oh, this guy's going to get me paid. Get me to a place I want to be at. And also let me know why I might not get paid. That's a good thing. People need more of that in their life. Yeah. Uh, speaking of in your life, um, so let's just say you're at the house, you know, and I don't want to talk too much personal stuff, but your personal relationship <laughs> has been pretty public. Let's say you're at the house, you know, you're having mm -hmm. a little dinner. What do you have? What do we, what type of food? Are you on a certain diet or anything? Uh, not a diet, you know. I'm back in the gym now. I've been, I've been, good. I've been benching, benching pretty heavy. Thank you. I, I, uh, I do a lot of core work. Not, not really diet. I try to eat as clean as I possibly can. Okay, so, um, so we got some grilled chicken. We yeah. got some rice, Brown maybe rice, some rice. broccoli out there. Beans. Are we having a wine? Are we Because LeBron took a picture of his suite in the Orlando thing, and it yeah. was like seven hundred bottles of wine. <laughs> I don't know how his liver yeah. survives, but are you a wine? I have a great, I have a great wine collection, but I'm not the, I'm not the biggest wine guy. I, I, I'll definitely have a glass of Lobos, though. Yeah. Okay, Lobos. We got some chicken. Are we smoking a cigar? We got a cigar. Uh, maybe a cigarette. Maybe a cigar weed. Uh, <laughs> it, it, no, I don't. No, not, no, I, 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 no. Okay, so you're doing this, you're hanging out, you're eating your food, and then all of a sudden Adele just starts singing in the background, and it's like the greatest voice of all time echoing through the whole house. Is That's that never happened. That's <laughs> never happened. Okay, all right. I'm actually the singer. I'm the singer. Oh, I appreciate that. How come we're not seeing you in yeah, Vegas? Yeah, you, you ever heard of Gerald LeVert? I'm singing Four Seasons. I'm singing, you know, I, 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 I'm, right now I've been listening to a lot of Marvin Gaye. Ooh. Um, okay. you know, I, I'm the singer. 
Hey, amen. Listen, you are whoever the hell you say you are. That is what I've learned <laughs> through your entire life. And uh, keep inspiring all of us. Literally, the hustlers around the world are watching what you're doing and respecting the hell out of it. You've blazed your own trail. You've done it your way. And you're continuing to dominate. Can't wait to dive into your book, Lucky Me, a memoir. Yeah, dive in, guys. It's a, it's a good read, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. But please... Don't just let it sit on your shelves. Really, really dive in for the book. That book is, is as much as about you guys as it is about me. Do you think 22 rules, though, too much? You think? No. No. They're not those type of rules. They're, those are like, that's like the seasoning on the chicken. I'm just, I'm just seasoning oh. the food. Yeah, it's not like yeah. a, you better do this, this, or this. No, it's not like that. Okay, you need the seasoning, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. AJ. Well, AJ doesn't eat it. That guy has no seasoning at all. Gross. You, you take a piece of cardboard, put it right, you put it in the right oven, right temperature, he would eat it. But all of us need the seasoning. But look oh, yeah. at AJ, though. AJ's ripped up. You know, if I could, I don't want to be as big as AJ. I just want to, I could get some, a, a few tips from AJ just on the core, on the core. I don't want my arms too big, AJ, because I wear a lot of ex expensive, uh, well, I kind of mix it. Your I arms love never get too big. Too big. Your arms will never be too big. big. Yeah, your arms will look good in that shirt if it was too tight. I know all your stuff okay. is custom. You got tons of money. You get custom custom clothes <laughs> cut to you. Yeah, I gotta send you guys some Clutch Athletics. We're in the we're in the yeah. Dick Sporting Goods in, in in Pittsburgh. Pat, we're on NewBalance.com. We're we're in Foot Locker. We're in DTLR. We're in Snipes. We're in JD Sports. See, so you don't know about that. That's totally separate from the representation business. <laughs> it's a sports performance, a brand with style. Okay. And so in functionality, and we, we're headed back into the communities. And so I'm really passionate about that as well. And we, we're partnering with New Balance. New Balance does all our manufacturing distributions. We're, we're co-branded. And I'm going to send you guys some product for sure. Hell yeah, we'd love yeah, that. We just, we just announced Will Anderson. But see, this is just, a, this is just us kind of like the appetizer. Now you'll get our first real season that, we, that, we've, that we've built out. And so it's great. All this from being. Wait, I'm excited about it. All this from being a dice player, huh? That's what I heard. I'm hustling, man. Yeah, all this from all this from just my dad taught me how to shoot dice when I was eight years old. Just in case I ever got laid off, he told me these were the tools that would get me between me being laid off and my next job. And so he taught me how to shoot dice and he taught me how to play cards. And my stage was when we would go to the family reunions, we would all be gambling, and then my dad would say, "Okay, it's on you," and and, and then I would have to, you know. Win, lose, or draw. That's how I learned. And so, like Steph practiced his jump shot, I practiced my dice shot when I was a kid. And, and then, obviously, in the neighborhood, that's what we did. Pitch horse. Everything we did, whether it was race, play football, play basketball, horseshoes, etc. if there was a disagreement, the next word was bet. <laughs> so, bowling, ping pong, flipping yeah. quarters, flipping dollars, pistol break, everything was about a bet for me. Everything. Well, you bet on yourself throughout your entire life, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And you being a fader at the age of eight in one of those circles <laughs> is a hilarious thing to think about. And we appreciate you. Keep going, all right? <laughs> Thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on. Thank La you. Ladies and gentlemen, author, mm -hmm. agency owner, yep. what? clothing line founder. What? What else? We got a restaurant? We got any restaurants yet? Is that next? Father. Father. No. What? Father, yeah. Singer, we learned. Yep. yep. What? Singer, yes, yes. Oh, you need to get a collab. Yeah, you, need... I do, you know, I do I do it all, man. I'll come, I'll come on the Pat McAfee show and just hang out and do whatever you guys need me to do. I'm just a team player. Wait, we would be lucky for that. Ladies and <laughs> yeah. gentlemen, Rich Paul. Thank you, hey, Rich. At the age of 10, fading in the Cleveland streets. <laughs> a dice, it would be hilarious. Who's fading? Him? <laughs> me. Looking for a fader, not a friend. Yeah, that would be a hilarious situation. Hustler. Just taking over the whole world. Yeah. Dog. What a dream, dude. Yeah. Honestly, good for him. You know the guys yeah. he mentioned from Glenville, from Glenville, Ohio, up by Cleveland. Ted Ginn, senior, the coach. I mean, they've been have they've been. It's been a pipeline of talent for years. Yeah. So Whitner uh, from there, yeah. he's the one who said the other day, Dak sucks." Yeah, yeah. he did. Just said it on <laughs> Sunday night. Said it on I Sunday. Played with, I played with Dante. He almost killed me a few times because he was such a missile. I love that. Guy. Dante Hitner is what yeah. they called him. Uh, anything that we haven't chatted about? The Bills are signing Josh Norman back yeah, uh, to be corner. Congrats yeah. to Lake Norman back in the league. Mm -hmm. 
What's everybody pumped about? Everybody's pumped up about yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought he retired, to be honest. We all did. Obviously, they're thinking ago. about something. Uh, Dable and the Giants are optimistic about Daniel Jones' neck injury. That's oh, big. That's, that's good news. Good. Anytime you hear a neck injury, there is a lot of different levels of worry, mm -hmm. for sure. This one said they're optimistic about Daniel Jones and his neck injury this week. He's moving in the right direction. That's good. Better than moving in the wrong direction with a neck. Yep. Right. <laughs> Saw him on uh, Up and Adams this morning. They had his actual neck cut off they did. from the stream. Mm -hmm. oh. So we're trying to see if there was anything on there. We couldn't tell. Uh -uh. But it did look like he was in good spirits and made a regular appearance. So True. that means it can't be that bad. Right. But Bingo. He, he didn't move his head at all. So he might have been in a neck. They might have told him, like, hey, looking good for Sunday. You can't move your head no. the entire week. Good appearance, though. Yeah. Uh, I think it was good appearance. Yeah. And anytime you're doing that type of stuff, you don't have that much worry, I would say. Yeah. You know, like, those aren't the things that are... Uh, and he did look like Tone Diggs who slept on his neck wrong that one day. Yeah. Oh, no, he fell down the stairs down at 5 a.m. Yeah. Oh, right. there it is. I've recovered. Congratulations. You Thank you. Me. This quick, guy's not recovered. Quick uh -oh. Banker's hours, huh? Well, this is what he's talking about. We have a guy come on here and go, you know what? Me and RFK Jr. against Fachi yep. and Travis Kelsey. And then all of a sudden that starts happening. Of course. Throttle. It's because they need him. Throttle. It, has, it did happen last Tuesday, I believe, too, after the. Yep. Oh, we're currently yep. calling him. Calling him you hear us trying to get him back. This show will not continue until AJ Hawks is back on the show. Okay. A lot of respect. I'm back. Okay. Nice. All right. Thank you, AJ. Someone's someone's throttling it. Someone's throttling my connection. You know that. Yeah, we had, we had the same conversation while you weren't while you weren't here. So we're, yeah, we're all, every Tuesday after Aaron says something, we're all on the same page. Um, uh, final story here that I think we have to cover before everything DB to wrap up this glorious Aaron Rodgers Tuesday with the NHL puck dropping this evening, which we can't wait for. Yeah. Mark Davis had a hell of a night in Las Vegas. They did crush it. So where they put these suites in these new stadiums for these owners, I guess, is in direct eye view of every human on earth. <laughs> There was video of him last night, obviously, on the cast, of him not being happy about what the Raiders were doing. He's just sitting in his suite, this son of a bitch. He starts lifting the cup holder of the seat up and out of this whole thing. What I hate to... These <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> son of a... God, uh, I'm on TV. Lovely. And then he stops. Yep. He was also found at a slot machine in Las Vegas throughout the evening as well. We don't know if the Raiders won and he won on the slots, but we do know airport. he had to pass some time, yeah, yeah. and he said, boy, let me get in some winnings. I appreciate the fact that Mark Davis is a normal human. Yeah. I appreciate that Mark Davis exists, and I appreciate the fact that the Raiders have got a big-time win for Mark Davis last night in his time in Las Vegas, AJ. Yeah, the game was, uh, it was not exactly a barn burner. It wasn't a shootout that we were hoping to see, but, I mean, what a pick at the end by Robertson, by the way. I know I know. Uh, Jordan Love had to step up, so he didn't see him early when he threw his hand up. Like, so he had to throw it a little bit late. But, man, when he when Robertson turns to jump, he elevates. He's up, and then he rises even more once he's in the air. Like, that's what's crazy. Like, what an absolute – what a play. Dude. He's like a Harrier bomber, for those that don't yeah. know. That thing takes off straight up in the air like a helicopter, and then it flies. That's what he looked Ooh. like as he was floating mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter of a must-have-it situation. I don't know how tired you are there, especially a corner with how much you've run all game, but whenever you need a 40-inch vertical and to float yep. and catch one on your fucking shoulder like it's a speaker – what an insane play. There's people saying, not a good ball, not a good ball. Maybe. Throw it a little longer. But can we just talk about the play that was made yeah. on the other side of this thing? It was phenomenal. To let, good in coverage. He was beat for a second. Gets back in coverage. Sees Christian's eyes probably get big, mm -hmm. if I had to guess what he did. Turns his head. Finds ball. Takes off. Makes play. All in a matter of a second and a half. It's like... That was a freak yeah. show situation, yeah. D-Bud. Great, great play to end the game. And like you said, it's all, it always works in tandem when you're in coverage because he was beat early. And if Jordan Love can sit in that pocket and just throw it on time, we've seen him, he can make that throw uh, 10 out of 10 times. But once you kind of got to get out of the pocket, put it in your left hand, step up, throw it, throw off that timing. And uh, obviously corners love that and then go up and play that ball. Third down, still had a timeout left. That's my big thing. Everybody's talking about his throw. I'm like, I'm not worried about the throw. That was a hell of a play. That should have at least been deflected and just lived to see another day. Yeah. But also, don't need it right there. You know what I mean? We, yeah. we still got time. Literally, we still got another play. We still got time. And we have a timeout. It's like those are the types of things, I think, as you play more ball, 
start to come to fruition, I think. And it also doesn't show up, you know, in any stats. But, I mean, that's Max Crosby, again, just affecting the game. If he's not coming around the corner like that, that is a touchdown because Jordan Love doesn't have to move and reset and do all that. So Crosby was ridiculous. What a weapon for the DBs to have. You talk about having Max. They're supposed to have – I don't want to keep harping on it, but it's like – Yeah. Supposed to have Chandler Jones, too. Oh, yeah. Tyree Wilson is supposed to be a guy. Yeah. Yeah. People forget he got taken seven. Yeah, well, he's not, drafts, so uh, unfortunately. Oh. But we do know Chandler on the football field is a guy. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. And it's like he's supposed to – imagine what Max would – I mean – I mean, they could have taken Jalen Carter. Like, let's let's be serious here. If they had Jalen Carter on the inside and Max Crosby on the outside – And? And if, Chandler Jones on the other side, that'd be the best That's a whole football. different fucking season. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Maybe, maybe you know. slide Bubby down to the edge. Yeah. Oh, Bobby good. Bob Splane's got that seat. He does. Mm-hmm. And he's got the green dot. Exactly. He's right where he should be. What a, what a come up for Bob. He's awesome. Hey, what's your job was, for the Pittsburgh Steelers? I'm the grunt. I run my face in the face. <laughs> hey, what are you doing for the Raiders? I'm the captain, I'm the starter, and I get two picks on prime time. Yeah. Good for Bob, dude. Yeah. We love him, AJ. We love that guy. He's everywhere. He's honestly everywhere. When he's out there, like you see him always right. Him and Max Crosby together. I saw Max's comments after the game, too. It seems like those guys have a lot of fun together and work hard. But yeah, it's always fun because you see, yeah, old Bubby Spillane is always by the ball and he's usually. He's usually never finishing on his back. He's usually finishing on top of somebody. Yeah, he's usually finishing on stomachs. That's, yeah, right. that's right. Isn't he? Yeah. He's finishing on stomachs. On top of that. Isn't he, AJ? He ain't finishing yeah, on I mean, back. Probably on no. their back, too. Well, no. maybe they're on their back, and he's on top of them sometimes. Too. Well, they it's might finish on their back. Right into the ground. Yeah. But he's finishing on stomachs. stomachs and always. Chest. All the time. Mm-hmm. Even faces. We've sometimes. seen him finish yeah, on faces. Too. That's oh. Bob's <laughs> playing football. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Put on your highlight film, Bob. Put a, put Pat's voice over a highlight of him making these picks. This guy's finishing on stomachs. Yeah, he gets sucked mm-hmm. up and then finished on stomachs. So did you hear uh, Troy Aikman was talking about it last night? Or maybe it was Peyton. The Raiders have no run game at all. It's none. And in the first quarter, the linebackers for the Packers got sucked up on a run fake. And then he threw the ball right over the head. Oh, yeah. And Peyton goes, yeah, just do a play action. Even when you can't run, the linebackers will move. Like, Peyton was so yeah. surprised that they were yeah. showing any respect at all for the play action. Then he had to go into the – you see what Jimmy's doing here? He's turning his full back to really sell that mm-hmm. thing. But there is a chance that they don't respect it at all. The Green Bay defense, Joe Barry's public enemy number one. Matt Canada for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yep, and then – And then Joe Barry seems to be public enemy number one for Packers fans. That's real? Do you yeah, do you yeah. still believe that? Does everybody believe that? Absolutely. I mean, it's hard after last. I mean, they only gave up 17 yeah, points, yeah. so it's yeah. not it's not like crazy, but I mean, when they play good teams, yeah, they get gashed. They haven't been able to stop the run for 3 years. Um guys like Jair say like, "Hey, I want to follow the best receiver." He says like, "Nah, don't worry about that." And then the best receiver has like 150 yards in the first half. They just don't ever make any changes ever. I mean, same deal last night in the red zone, you know, the touchdown that Jacoby Myers caught they got their safeties playing in the end zone it's like okay they're just gonna run a slant and it's gonna be an easy ass touchdown it's just like little shit like that and then you look it's like they have nine first round picks playing on the defense you'd think at some point those guys would- this should be the Browns defense exactly. this should be the Cowboys defense and they're just not and it's just year after year after year after year the same shit happening over and over here's what Jair Alexander said after the game about expectations on their defense I appreciate him saying it now, what he's saying is very far-fetched in the NFL <laughs> yes. and expectations, but here's what Jair Alexander had to say about expectations on their defense. Yeah, I think at this point it's pretty obvious that the defense has to not give up any touchdown. You know, I think that's a part of being self-critical of our defense because, you know, the offense is pretty young, you know, and they're still figuring out their mojo. So, you know, it, the defense, we got to – we got to be the ones to score and stop them from scoring. I love that. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious now we can't give up a touchdown. That's not good. <laughs> no. That's not. A, I mean, they played great last night, only give up a certain amount of points. People still hate Joe Barry, but I think that is their actual mindset behind closed doors if you hear Jair properly there. Yeah, it's kind of a mindset that teams' defenses would have, and D-Buck could, could help me out here, where if you know your backup is playing, you know your main guy's hurt, that's the first mm-hmm. thing. D-Corner, hey, it's on us, guys. We need to get – at least let's get a couple turnovers. Let's set them up in good field position. Like that's that feels like the mentality they're having right now. Yeah, but I mean, you mentioned the backup, not your starter. You need no, your you starter. Can't, yeah, yeah, it's yeah not good now. And Pat said it. You get they gave up seventeen. Like that's kind of the number going into it. Usually, at least quarterback threw three picks too. Like Jordan Love threw three picks, and you only that give up seventeen. Two missed field goals on the other side. One yeah. blocked, one missed. Well, I mean, Rogers, gonna happen. Rogers alluded to it too. Like they, 
you get down in the red zone like that after having like a 70 yard play to mm-hmm. Watson, you have to score a fucking touchdown there. You can't kick a field goal and they do the same, run it up the middle to AJ Dillon three times and say, all right, fuck it, let's just kick the the 21 yard field goal. Yeah. You can't do that. It's tough. Defense, I mean, that was, we think back to, I'm not doing it. I'm not saying it. Ooh. What? Think back to what? Well, the Denver Broncos, whenever uh, T- Tebow was quarterback. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. and we loved him, Tebow. Yes, but for one reason or another, it just wasn't working out. They were winning games nine to three. Yeah, like, and they made it all. The way. Yeah, they were like, how many points is this team giving up every single week? Six point five. <laughs> like one touchdown, an extra point will win yeah. with this defense. That's a weapon. Like knowing, yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's football. Obviously, scoring more than the other team. But buddy, if your team can keep that. 14 oh, yeah. at this point yeah if they consistently are holding teams under 20 even 17 14 yeah like yeah. You're, you're always going to be in it even if your offense isn't explosive as long as you don't turn the ball over a bunch you're going to be in most games it used to be like I'm talking about Tebow remember last year last year was a stat that if the Broncos scored like 18 points they would have won oh, yeah, yeah. 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 more games yeah, so well, that's five. completely flipped oh. they stink on defense now now yeah it's kind of why is that you think they've given Good up question New uh, new coordinator. Yep. Lose Vic. Uh, yeah, right? you, you lost. Vance you know. Joseph's in there. Yeah, it was uh, it's Giro. Giro. Oh, yeah, who's yeah. at Carolina now? Yeah, yep. Carolina, yeah. Well, I think he's probably not that thrilled. Yeah, be. right. Mm. Yeah. Hey, that place is wild. Listen to this. Frank Reich was speaking to the media about life as the head coach for the Carolina Panthers. And listen to this break. This We're week five. This is his first year Nuts. as the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Here's Frank Reich chit-chatting about his life with ownership. There's different philosophies in ownership. You know what I mean? Some owners kind of s- stay stay away and and don't engage a whole lot. Other owners do. And his philosophy is he's going to engage. And, um, and listen, it's only been a short experience, but it's been a really good experience. Of course. Uh, it hasn't been fun. Oh, you sure. Know, it's not fun. Those, sure. those meetings aren't – I wouldn't characterize them as fun meetings. Um, but those meetings make me better, and I trust they make us better. They haven't <laughs> thus far. They haven't thus far. But I like the thought of the coach walking in. Sit coach up. feels like the players, doesn't it? He? he feels like the players with, mm. when the owner's around. Sit down. Thank you. Do you want water or anything? No? <laughs> All right, good. You don't deserve water. Yeah. You know that. <laughs> Let's go through some things. You know, this guy has all his data and analytics printed out for him. You know, I was showing an interesting stat today. Our team, okay, right here, lower left quadrant. You see that? Every other team where we're looking to be, up here. Hmm. Explain that to me. You have four (laughs) minutes. You can use the entire office. What do you think is happening in there? It does sound like he's getting called to the carpet. Hey, you need to do this. We need to try that. Was he doing this to Wilkes last year whenever Wilkes was winning Ooh. as the interim head coach with a team that I bet was – they watch the games together. Don't you think he comes in Monday morning oh. possibly and, and the owner – maybe the owner and head coach one-on-one watch the game together and they go through each play. Hey, now tell me what this call is. Now why did you make this call? What is mm. this? What's that? What happened here? Well, I made the call for Adam Thielen, and Adam Thielen wasn't oh, on the field. And the owner's like, you need to tell the media that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nah. You need to tell you need to tell the media that in your next press conference, or I'm going to tell them. Okay. Like, is this guy terrorizing Frank Wright? What if he is a like uh, some coaches are a little bit more stern than other coaches? Well, he said it hasn't been fun. I think it's been good. Yeah. What if he's just like, look at the way you blow your whistle. What if it's like yeah. everything he does in there? Tough. Oh, I love it. Shirts untucked. Is he complaining like coaches do when things go bad? Like, we got our shirts untucked. We got, I see we got tape on our shoes. Like, is he things. doing that the right? Can we not have some fresh white shoes on the sidelines? Yeah. Can we not have enough? I, I mean, what are we doing here? What is football? Frank Reich had no idea this is what he was signing up uh, for, it seems like. I mean, he had to. You know, you knew what the roster was. You saw the moves they made uh, last year. Um, now, you got to have a conversation with the ownership. You know, okay, how much time do I have? How much uh, input do I have on putting this roster together? You got a rookie quarterback who's obviously struggling, not with a lot of talent around him, but it's got to be tough just having somebody. You got, I think Cliff Kingsbury talked about you know oh, watching yeah. film or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Owners, oh, we yeah. saw uh, even Carly uh, Ursay on the sideline with the head still, still, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, still there. I don't know how yeah. how much input or how much talk. And we know Ursay knows ball, but like. Uh, you know, obviously, they, they're their team. They're going to run the show how they see fit, but um, that's got to be tough, especially if you're not used to it at a, as a head coach. Carly Arce on the sideline, headset with microphone if needed, and wrist, 
yep. wristband is still one of my favorite things happening in the NFL every single week that is actually happening. Sweet. Well, every week, it's like at those home games, we look down the sideline, we're like, oh, Carly's not here. What, what are we doing? We're going to lose this game. And then all of a sudden, the team goes the other side. It's like, there she, there is. she is. Boom. Just lit. Could you imagine? Does what? she ever talk? Did yeah. she ever press a button and talk to somebody? I haven't seen her drop that th that thing down <laughs> she and calls really fourth quarter in. plays, right? I would like to wear a headset. That'd be very entertaining and very insightful to hear all the different coaches chatter. That's what I'm saying. How much do you think coaches are? Um, but I mean, divulging? coach though, you you know, you, you know the team owner got a headset on. You know, fifty yards down the field. You know, you know the type of shit is said on the sideline. That's the what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's, I wonder, that's a wild dynamic. I appreciate the fact that Carly's doing it because she wants to learn every aspect of football. She didn't have a chance to like grow up in the locker room, although she was around. Obviously, her dad owned the team. Like Her dad was an equipment manager. Her mm -hmm. dad was GM for a time. Her dad was in this whole thing. And as you know, the transition takes place at some point, hopefully forever from now, but they all understand it. I think she just wants to learn more and more and more as – about football as she can. That's an interesting tactic, though. And Shane Steichen, right, first year head coach, like I wonder if there was a moment where he was about to say something to somebody and then he just sees Carly down at the end. <laughs> yeah, staring. <laughs> his get-back guy, his get-back coach is probably hitting him. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey. Probably a mic coach. You got, yeah, you got a get-back guy and a filter, filter, filter guy. Yeah. Yeah. Filter, hi, 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 hi. She could be like ingratiating herself though, and like going and like getting a pinch of chaw, putting it in, and like just Good. what the fuck That'd are we doing awesome. out here? Like, Imagine she yeah. drops that thing. Yeah. That'd be cool. Throw the ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Puts it back up. Mm -hmm. Shane, who what? What what? Look to your right, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's Carly Ursay down there. Yeah. So awesome. We wanna air it out, motherfucker. I Let's love go. it. I really enjoy it. I do appreciate the hell out of it. It is funny though to look at. Like. Carly Arce needs to know that. It is funny to see her killing it, too. Fashion. Like, oh, her, yeah. her, she is killing it fashion-wise. Oh, always. It's not like sideline apparel. It is like <laughs> dope dress. Yeah. Fresh. Sick <laughs> shoes. Incredible thing. And then headset, arm sleeve. Yep. We're taking notes the entire time. It is just abnormal, I think, whatever you think about full NFL stuff. But I appreciate that she's that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just right there in the middle. That is not like a... Yes. <laughs> Sitting on top of the graphic. <laughs> Not edited, obviously. No. Not edited. No, it's behind the scoreboard. I love everything about what's happening there. <laughs> but the first time I saw it, Carly Ursay's on the fucking sideline right now? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Get Jim down there with the headset right next yes. to it. That'd be amazing. So they used to talk about how Al Davis or other owners would like call down and be like, we're running the ball. The next 10 plays, because we just paid their running back $26.5 million guaranteed over the next two years. And then the AOC is like, was that the? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. 24 power. 24 yeah. power. <laughs> we, we are going to do that. Jim has never really been that type of guy, but I do hope he hits a phase of life where he does become that guy. That'd be awesome. I do hope that Shane Steichen's got to call a timeout and go to the owner's suite and go, no, no, <laughs> we can't do that. Don't you know me? <laughs> That'd be amazing. Ownership is a crazy thing. Oh, my God. Nuts. Yeah. Just able to do whatever the fuck you want. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's why the Carly thing, like, I, I think it's kind of sweet. Like, as, yes. as a fan of a team with an older owner, mm -hmm. I wouldn't feel as good about Bob Kraft passing it to Jonathan Kraft if Jonathan Kraft wasn't in the suite every single Sunday watching every single game. So I think it is kind of one of those things where down the road, like, it is funny now. But in like 20 years, when it is Carly's team, we will be able to say like she knows she was football. in there. Yeah, it, she's been on the sideline. She and even if because if you put me in there, I might not understand what the fuck's going on either. Like, well, I'm, and I'm saying me as like punter. I'm not saying that she. And I think she had Hasselbeck going in at uh, whenever she first started being in the building every single day. I think Hasselbeck was going in like once a week to like go through the game plan with her. Like oh, that wow, was a part of it that. and to like learn stuff. Yeah, I think she's That's like true. trying her absolute best to get like a full on thing but in the middle of the game I assume there's a lot that she doesn't understand like I wouldn't either but there is certainly like the way things work yeah. she at least has an understanding of there you like, go. this is coming from here this is going to here we could do this instead like that is a valuable piece of information with that being said I wonder how the coaches feel Yes, <laughs> knowing that there is a big brother basically just sitting in on your headsets yeah. which could be a, a sacred area for the coaches but with the Colts it's like listen She's not even there, even though she is. 
you just got to talk how you need to talk. Yeah. And I assume they just get used to it. Yeah, yeah. probably. Jim probably told I, – I like would hope that Jim would, you know, at least, you know, give her some sort of prerequisite. Like, hey, this isn't going to be, like – Words that you think are going to be just normal and that are like nice. Like, hey, this there's, is a, there's some real intense shit. That yeah, goes yeah, on. yeah. Lives are on the we line. We saw Ken Dorsey lose his mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bingo. you know he has a microphone in front of his mouth. There, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know before he does that, like there's some really intense guys who commit their entire beings to these games. Bingo. Their entire lives are in there, and they might still live in 1995. Oh yeah. Because yeah. so. that was the last time they went out in public. Mm -hmm. And all they've done is watch. So I'm not saying the Colts have any of those guys, but those guys exist. Them having a microphone, I couldn't even fathom when one of their guys fucks up. Yeah. You know, like a linebacker coach's guy fucking up, D coordinator asking, didn't we say? Yeah. Yeah. Ah! yeah. Now we gotta get to the next play. It's like chaotic. I'm happy I don't have a headset, but I'm happy Carly does as well. Let's get smarter. Let's get better. Hell yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something that I love every single week because we don't only learn about defenses. We we'll also learn about offenses yeah. through it all. Mm -hmm. yeah. With one of the biggest football minds in sports media, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for that good D. Oh, <laughs> Everything oh, yeah. DB oh. with Darius Butler. Hey, Butler. Hey, there is some good D, but it's some bad D in here too. Unfortunately, Jeez. we don't need to spend too much time on this. We don't place. like that bad D. No, yeah, no, 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 nobody no. does. Nobody does. But um. We spent enough time on this Some play. people deal with the bad D, though. Yeah, yeah, some people probably like it. That's love. That is love. It's like what you Poop. said earlier. What would you do for love right before we got off the ESPN? The and things we do for love. Yeah. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Bad D. That's what teams have to deal with whenever their yeah. team doesn't show up. Yep. Slinging that bad D all over the place. Let's but not here. It. Yeah, not the Raiders. No Robinson way. up top on Watson. Like I said, we talked about early 51 seconds left, third and 10. Oh, I like there that. There is time. There's, yeah, you see. I see you, Bruce. I see you, Bruce. The new edits. So there is time, obviously, to run, to run out of bounds. It's obviously four down territory. They're down four here. But Jay Love, he sees Watson throw his hands up, his hand up, so he wants to take the shot here. I understand why he wanted to take the shot, but pause right here. If he's able to just step up in his pocket, because right now, by the time uh, Robinson gets his 20, he's ran by. That's a 4-3. Watson is every bit of 4-3 on the field. But once again, that D-line up front, Causes some disruption. Oh, yes, he, has, oh, he actually man. has to put this ball in his left hand oh. so he can't even step up and throw it right now. And then by the time he resets his feet and throws it, now this DB, this is what you call makeup speed. This is why you do those combine drills where you do the makeup speed. And it does a great job. Something a lot of people at home, as AQ would say, a lot of people at home in AC with a clicker in their hand, hey, why don't you just turn around and play the ball? Turn around and play the ball. He actually didn't panic, didn't get the PI turned around and played the underthrown ball. You see Max Crosby right there, Max Crosby being a, a game wrecker. There's as three usual. guys responsible for Max Crosby on that. Yeah. yeah, and he still sure. caused disruption. So that's why pass rushers get paid so much. They can cover up a lot on the back end. That is the best coverage up there, making them get off the spot. And then just an incredible play on the ball down the field. Hey, I don't, people are saying they want him to throw that ball differently. That particular, I don't know. Earlier was ball. the only thing he could have did. Yeah, and Double. then when you throw up a ball for, for quarterbacks and offensive coordinators or whatever, sometimes they probably just tell them to throw it up because more good things can happen for the offense than bad. That's obviously the yeah. worst, but usually think about, think about that. Yep. Sorry to cut you off, but you ahead. mentioned it. The underthrown ball, that is P.I. like 50% of the time, I feel like. Yep. DBs usually panic. The receiver comes back for the ball, goes through his body. They throw the flag, ball's in the one. Yeah. It's, it's floating. Yeah, this is an unbelievably athletic play to get Jeez. your head around jump. And finish on the ball. But like AJ said, a lot of guys, that's an uncomfortable position. You know the ball is coming. You know you're beat. You know you're behind the fast guy. But you, have, you also see the back of that end zone, too. So great job by him. Uh, pause it real quick, playing that ball. Uh, this is third and 15. So third and 15, usually you see teams kind of run a screen, run a draw, run something safe. But when you have a quarterback like Josh Allen, you say, hey, F, we're going to take a shot. You got Stephon Diggs. That helps as well. Right now they try to get a man zone indicator with having – Dawson Knox out here. He motions down. You'll see Darius Williams out here. It's going to go to a single high. Number five, Cisco will be in the middle of the field. He's actually going to vacate the middle of the field, though, which I hate, especially when it's a guy coming from the slot. And then you're going to leave Stephon Diggs one on one with Darius Williams, who's been on this everything DB a couple weeks now. Oh, no. Oh, good you hate D this guy. And a good D. Good oh, D. Okay, good he D. makes okay, an unbelievable D. play because right now he's outside leverage. Just like I said, that free safety. Kind of abandoned in the middle of the field, left him hanging. If you run it back a little bit, you'll see five. He takes this crosser, Gabe Davis, for some reason, and um, <laughs> leaves Stephon Diggs running down the middle of the field. 
but uh, he does a great job outside in, just hauling ass and making, once again, a great play on the football. Yep, so right here, as that guy you have right in his vision, that flat defender is actually responsible for that crosser coming from the other side of the field. He's in pretty good position around the sticks. It's third and 15, so he's kind of at the sticks. But look at his finish on this ball. Boom. High pointed, come down with wow. it. Wow! Damn! You know, and that's, you know. That was in London? Great you know, play. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was London. This is a London game. So this is a huge did, play. Did he slam it right after this? Because that would make a ton of sense. Did Stephon Diggs slam Steph, the, yeah. the, the tablet, tablet. tablet after that? I mean, this was just a great, this is one of those plays because this is the right read, I think. Once that free safety leaves the middle of the field, this is the ball you want. But, I mean, this is just an unbelievable. I don't know if he could have led him any more. Like, that's a great job. Is he mad, at, is he mad at himself? Probably mad at himself, yeah. yeah. Probably mad at himself. Mm. Makes sense. Because he expects to make that play. And Josh exactly. Allen, he sees his guy one-on-one -on -one down there. This is a top, you know, three receiver in the league. So he feels, obviously, he can make that throw. Um, but that's a great play by that corner. Climbing the ladder and uh, coming down with the ball. It's a long play. Yeah. yeah. So that's a lot of feel. You got to rush and track the ball. So. Yeah, I mean, unbelievable play once again by Darius Williams, the former uh, former Ram out there. Making Good for plays. him, bro. Uh, uh, Jacobs. Now, Foxy, th this guy up here, he's been kind of had a, a rough start. Oh, yeah. I actually just saw on Twitter a public apology form, you know, that people yeah. make up for Jerry Jacobs because the last three weeks he's been balling. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So last, and people have hated him. Last three weeks you been balling. Saying. You love to see that from corners and quarterbacks. Obviously, you got to have short-term memory out there playing those positions. Another turnover from Jacobs. Cover two. We've seen this a lot. Pause it real quick, Pat. Flat defender. So right now you're going to get a seven route, a flag route, whatever you want to call it and then a flat route in front. And as this flat defender, you're taught and coached to play these high to low. So take away the high one. If they throw the low one, go and tackle it. Actually, a lot of zone coverages, coaches will t teach you. I know Bill Belichick used, used to teach us. Oh, yeah. Six yards and under, that's kind of like a no cover area. So those nope. are the ones that we rally. Free. Yeah, that's like the, that's what we rally and tackle to, especially on first and 10. You're not, that's the one you don't want to give up. Jacob does a good job, a great job of getting with, because at that corner position, when, you, when, you, when you're outside of everything, once you get that width, that actually kind of becomes your depth as well. You don't have to get as deep because you're getting wider and you can also see the quarterback and then high point and make a play on this ball. So this is a great job by him oh, from the beginning to the snag. end. And this is a young quarterback. You know, he'll learn from this, obviously, that, hey, guys move a little bit different on this league. Kind of baited him, right? Yeah, playing a little different game in between the years, pre-snap, post-snap. Obviously, he's being coached well. But um, it's just great execution from him on the back end. What do you think of this guy? Uh, I think he needs more help. He needs, he needs better protection. He needs better talent around him. Uh, the quarterback position, everybody talks about Brock Purdy, and he is a great quarterback. But you look around all the quarterbacks in history, you look around all the successful quarterbacks now, they have talent around them. They have good players. They have good schemes. They have good coaches. So... Uh, I'm not saying that he doesn't have good coaches, but you need the uh, talent. Well, yeah, sounds like you are. Well, that's what the owner's saying. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. The exactly. Mm -hmm. He's the the face. And correct me if I'm wrong, D-Butt, they run the double reverse flea flicker, the play after that interception for six. Correct. That is that sudden change. So that's Ben Johnson's MO. Like once sudden change, turnover, something happens, you know, that's when you're sitting on the sideline, you know, as a, as a defensive player, if you are the uh, Panthers defense, Oh shit, they throw a pick, you hurry up, you strap on, you get in the huddle, and that's when you get the trick plays because you know you aren't a little unsettled. So good 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 coaching once again from this Lions staff. Um Randy, Randy! Ooh. Randy, Randy, and he came out, uh, Nick, right, and confirmed that he did. This was the check. He changed the protection to slide it right. Randy Randy, obviously the R, and then also let Pickens know, hey, go deep and moss. Be Randy Moss right now. And as a DB. All the young DBs right now, if you are playing in the NFL, and this goes for definitely cover zero. Pause real quick, which is Nobody. zero deep help, even if it's cover one out here. If you're in this situation, 123 left in the game, it's second and nine, you're already borderline field goal range for this offense. So now as a defensive coordinator, I have to be a little more aggressive. I can't let them just pitch and catch it down the field and then kick a walk-off field goal to win it. So I'm going to be a little more aggressive. And this is when these guys got to make money. You run it back a little bit. George Pickens actually talked about this rep and said, like, I saw he opened, he opened the gate. This is something as a DB. If you're getting up there pressing, you got to reroute and disrupt that timing. Marlon Humphrey, he's, you know, probably still getting his legs up under him. First game back off of a PUP, kind of opened the gate. And this is what George Pickens does best. This is what people expect to come in this year from Pickett to Pickens. 
And this is a, a, a <laughs> Ooh. celebration, a little interesting. Serious, uh, yeah, pretty serious. Yeah. Yep, there, there, yep, yeah. There's another angle. Huh? But uh, great play uh, to walk off. Uh, well, not necessarily walk off. Raven still, yeah, still got a possession. Been. But this is the Randy Randy. So he sees the protect. Pause real quick. Yep. Sorry. So now AQ can obviously talk about this more in depth tomorrow. But right now, pre-snap, you do simple math. You split it in half. You got one, two, three, four guys over here. You got one, two, three, four over here as well. But they decide to slide it this way. So he actually comes across, pick the backside up. The whole line slides right. And Pickett knows if they send them all, they're going to have one more than we do to block it. So I got to get this ball out quick. And as a DB, when you press, you just make it simpler for the offense. Any quarterback in any league or level knows I got one-on-one. We did it in the backyard. I'm going to my guy. I like him over your guy. Hey, that's a good ball. Great from ball. Kenny Pickett. Gorgeous. Great ball. Huh? And he made the check. It's like Ben Roethlisberger's back under center. Look like, out. Oh, that was what he was throwing in the preseason. Great ball. And what happened? Too much thinky? <laughs> hey, <who laughs> Too much knows? thinky, thinky. Pause honest, it dude. real quick. You got Jamar Chase in a cut split here. This dude, I just saw a stat. He had 14 catches this game that went for a first down or a touchdown. That's <laughs> shit. Nuts. NFL yeah, it, was, record. it was like 16. It was like 16 catches. 195. 14 for first down or touchdown. Nuts. Oh. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. It, it was some up. I saw the same thing. Yeah, that's. It, it. might have been 13 or 14 or 15 or 16, but still. Yeah. Game changer. Yeah, he, he, he's a game changer. He made some noise in the locker room after the game, and they made a concerted effort to get him the ball here. Now, this is cover two. Once this, now, up top, the safety, you can see he's a little more shallow than he is, so he's not going to get his depth backside. And usually in split safety coverages, we, we deal with our issues on the other side. But as that deep half safety, if somebody runs this deep post into your zone, you got to be there. You can't. Get caught oh, up seeing no. what's in front of you because Boy. this, oh, and you rewind no. it real quick Jeez. because this is kind of what happens in defense, and AJ can, can attest to this too. Sometimes when you have a response, and this is life, this is regular work, whatever. Hell yeah. Sometimes you have your job to do, and the guy or the girl next to you doesn't do their job. You think, oh, let me, I got to do a little more to cover them up. And then when it comes and shows up, you're not where you're supposed to be. So that's kind of what happens on this play. If you pause it kind of when Burrow gets to the top, pause. So this deep safety, you should be in a deep half. This zone, this hook defender, he should be dropping straight back and kind of taking away that throw. But he sees that throw kind of naked because he reacts to a flat, def flat route, but you have a flat defender out there, so you let it play a little bit, pause. That's his responsibility. Once again, a rally and tackle. Seven should be here. He's running down the middle of the field. He'll never get to Jamar Chase. You should be deep. In this half, he, his eyes are there. Ooh. His eyes should be here. And Burrow makes an unbelievable throw. He's looked the healthiest he's looked all year Yo. last week. Unbelievable Whoa. throw from the back copy. You'll see <laughs> how Jeez. effortless this catch was over his left mm -hmm. shoulder. This is very similar to the catch we saw uh, Xavier Worthy make in the Texas game. Uh, Texas Bama. A punt. Yeah, this is the same. You see him track this ball. And it looks like a simple routine uh, throw. But this is kind of similar to the one Zay Flowers tripped on. He was running across the field in the post, and Lamar oh. kind of threw him up the field. Left shoulder, running right. Yeah. Snag. It's like a center Looking fielder. right. Looking right. On yeah. the right oh, shoulder. Oh, like, catch on the left shoulder. That's like, that's, Jeez. I mean, that's a great ball in stride. I don't know how far down the field, but in Damn. stride. I mean, just catching it. It looks like a routine. Like, I'm, I'm tossing you a <laughs> cornhole bag from right here. But that's, uh, that, I mean, the great ones make the, the, the tough things look easy. And that's what Jamar Chase. Oh, that would be sure. so much fun mm -hmm. to be able. That'd to be do. tough to do on. That'd be tough to do on air with no defense. That'd be Absolutely. a tough yeah. play to, to execute. What's that, he running like? Twenty one miles an hour there, probably. Yeah. He's moving. I'll, I'll be interested, though, but elite. Yeah, I would say twenty one because he he goes. Jamar Chase can roll. All right, let's. And last one, last one. Great play call, and George mm -hmm. Kittle kind of talked about it uh, yesterday when he was on the show about some of the eye candy and emotions and the shifts and things that they do. People ask why they do it right now. Pause. They got to get. They got to switch responsibilities right now. Curse has to go to the middle. Malik Hooker got to come down and cover Juice. These guys got to deal with you know their traffic here that they have like in a potential bunch. And then obviously Purdy has to see how they react on defense and then find the open guy. But you'll see it from here. They kind of do a clean job of picking up who they have. But now you got one on ones, and now you have to win that one on one rep against George Kittle. George Kittle does a great job beating them oh. there and then hitting them with something at the top of the route. Because once you get in that trail position, head oh. fake. boom, nice head fake, nice little dead leg to the left, gets across. Brock Purdy kind of rolling out to his left a little bit, sees him, throws it back to his, his, his uh, right. But once that motion happens pre snap, 
Now you kind of almost lose that middle of the field deep help. So now he's kind of lost in the sauce right now. Rewind it. So if they don't, if they never run this motion, if they just line up that way, they're going to have a post safety sitting in here. Mm. But since they have to switch responsibilities, he's still kind of, he was unsure before he even got lined up over yeah. there. Now he gets here, the ball gets snapped while he's still in motion. So now he's like, oh, uh, uh, is there, are they running? Are they doing this? Boom, Purdy's back there, cool. As a cucumber, makes a throw. Kittle obviously does the, the heavy lifting, beating the route, and that's how it happens. Thank you, Zary. Hi, boy, D. But. Hell yeah. Hey, Thank D. But, I want to ask you. Yep. I want to ask you quick, D. But, how tough is it defensively? I know, at least from the linebacker mm -hmm. position, you never know when they're going to snap that ball, like where he is at in the motion. They could snap it when he's right here, yep. maybe right here, or all the way out. Like, you never know when he's going to snap it. So that's where all your responsibilities are flying through your head in the moment. And, oh, here, ball snapped here. It what man, do I do? It's so, it's so tough because obviously, as a defender, especially if you're covering somebody, like, the more static everything is, the more everyone's staying still, the easier, the more things I can go through on the menu and kind of eliminate. But then once that motion comes across, I can't do that. I don't have that time. Everything is kind of off balance. And then you got to kind of be ahead of the game in those meetings, you know, going into a game. So it's tough, man. And, and Kyle Shanahan, they do the best job. Aaron Rodgers and Devontae, they used to do this a ton when they got in that low red area. You never knew where 17 was going to stop. He would come back. Go, Big Ben and A.B. used to do it. And then you get out leverage. So just a great job by the coach. And obviously Brock Purdy, you know, pulling the trigger. Hey, great job by you. Thank you, Thank you Bob. Bob. While we were doing that and learning about football, we got a FaceTime. I got a FaceTime from Orlovsky. Let me see. Let's see if he Damn. answers. Obviously, Aaron did. Hey, we're live. We're live. We're still live. Okay. Why are you doing this? What? I did not say. What you said. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what you said. I read the headline. That is what he said. He said it. Dang, I didn't said say it. that, dude. I yeah. didn't say that. I never once said Mac Jones would be playing uh, like he, he would be better than Brock Purdy or he'd be doing like I didn't say that. I said he would be playing like that, like that, like that. Oh, okay. Oh, that oh, like like right. Purdy? He's mad. Stop. <laughs> hey, you're doing great. You're having a hell of a run, bro. I just watched highlights of you from your career. You're incredible. That was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. The Walmart commercial was awesome. Oh yeah. my Everything's God. going good. You look good. Everything's good. Nice throw. More pants this week. Uh, apologize for putting words into my mouth, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> All good, right, good man. Luck, good luck I think we'll have one. to rewatch the film to see what happened. What'd you say? I think we'll have to rewatch the film there to see who's right, who's wrong, who's putting words where. You know what I mean? Why, why can't I just. Like, why does it have to be, oh my gosh, Dan Orlovsky hates Brock Purdy? Oh, is that what's happening now? Oh, my gosh, dude. That's what he said, right? It's not disrespectful <laughs> to Brock Purdy. I've never once said one disrespectful thing about Brock Purdy. When he played last year, I was like, this dude's really good. He's really good. I can also say Mac Jones would be playing like that. It doesn't mean he'd be playing as good. It doesn't mean Like that. What do you mean? What like, do you mean that. like that. Like Mac that. Jones I'm sorry. Stays, I might not know English. Like that. Then aren't you saying, yeah, he could be just as good. He would be no, Brock. I, I don't know. I have no idea if he would be just as good. I don't know if he'd be playing MVP level football. But he would be playing like that. He'd be playing. Like <laughs> yeah, you just stand. Dead, dead, dead. Hey, listen. All good here. Now, Aaron did take it as a chance to say some stuff. And to be honest, I forgot he even went after you because if you, I don't know if you heard this. Him and RFK Jr. are going to be debating <laughs> with Tony Fauci and Travis Kelsey at some point. I completely forgot about what he's – I apologize that we put you right in the middle. Here's Get Up, by the way. Who's, uh, RFK, who's RFK Jr.? Oh, running for yeah, president. Uh, I don't, oh. <laughs> listen, we just learned it. But Get Up said if Mac Jones was in San Francisco, he would be playing like Brock Purdy. Quote, that's what it – Dan, yeah. that's, that's your show. Quote, unquote. No, it's not. That's Mike Greenberg's show. Like Brock Purdy. So remember when people were saying if Lamar Jackson was was in Kansas City, he would be playing like Patrick Mahomes. No, no. I don't remember that. No, no I don't remember that. that. Yep. Remember. Dan, it feels like you're in a tough spot right now. Yeah. <laughs> you lose. It's all right, Dan. Yeah. Remember, Walmart commercial, yeah. awesome. Yes. Okay. Equalizer two promo, yeah. awesome. The shoulder thing. You're, 
<laughs> Equalizer three, you're right. That one was also sweet. Yeah. The shoulder thing is moving, doing numbers. Yeah. Ice cold Dr. Pepper. <laughs> moving. You're cr you're voicing over in a Toy Story movie. Awesome. Hello. You're killing it. I hope you have a good afternoon, bud. Well, it's going to be better than yours, it sounds. Yeah, boom. <laughs> I appreciate you, Dad. I will be watching it. <laughs> yeah. Is he mad? Uh, he should be mad at Get Up, not us, because they quoted. They, well, they, they put the quote no, out. No, Dan quoted Get Up, too. I mean, that's an absolutely horseshit argument. Like I it. said, like that. I said, like that. That me. Uh, yeah, same Brock thing. Purdy is playing at an MVP Sounds like level. a Schefter so situation if, from if yesterday. If was playing like that, he would be playing at an MVP level. Dan, when's it? I said something bad about I never said I'm Brock's fan. <laughs> now everybody's saying I'm not Brock's fan. Uh, Gumpy, Gumpy and Shefty yesterday certainly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they danced. Had a scene. Uh, before we get out of here, I think we need to acknowledge something oh. that I think we all have recognized, obviously, throughout the day, but we've kept it really hush-hush. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, it's somebody's birthday today. That's right. Hell yeah. ZD Baby, if you could please come out here. Please, ZD Baby, ZD, ZD Baby. baby. Out there, Z. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Z. Happy birthday. Howdy, baby, ZD, great work, ZD. Hell yeah. This is your best year yet. ZD coming up, pal. Happy birthday, pal. Proud of you, man. Love you, Z. 25? Why didn't he stay out here longer? Not, he just said, get me out of here. I'm taking He's a grinder. He He's going grinder. back to work. He's normally the one that orders the cake, too, for the birthdays. Yes. And none of us said <laughs> happy birthday to him all day. I think there was a chance he thought that we didn't know it was his birthday. So I'm happy we got to surprise him a little bit with a cake. Hell happy birthday, awesome. Z. Thank you guys. Happy birthday, Z. Z. Happy birthday, Z. Z. My mom's birthday as well, October 10th. Oh, happy, happy birthday, Miss Hawk. Hawk. Happy birthday, Ms. Hawk. Happy birthday, Miss Hawk. Way to go with what you created. Yeah. <laughs> All three of them. Bingo. Mm -hmm. AJ, everybody's going to talk about, obviously, because of what he's accomplished on the field and in life, but what Ryan does to lakes yeah. yep. oh my God. would never be duplicated. Michael Phelps couldn't beat up a fucking lake like the way Ryan Hawk does. No Not way. A chance. So, Mrs. Hawk, happy birthday to you. Uh -huh. Zito, happy birthday to you. Thank you. Big thanks to everybody that stopped by today. Kevin Seifert, Marcel Louis-Jacques, Mark Caboli, Aaron Rodgers, Rich Paul, J.K. Dobbins. Uh -huh. Hell of a day today. Huge. Great day. You're, you're cooking? Well, I just, it doesn't seem like A.J. planned a big birthday bash in D.C. for his mom today like she did for him a couple years ago. AJ's birthday is January 6th, and there was a little bit of a dust-up party for him yep. mm -hmm. over there in D.C. Costumes. That was amazing. That was one of my favorite things that had happened. <laughs> Just the coincidence side oh, of it perfect. all. Yep. Just the day afterwards. Heard you enjoyed your birthday yesterday in D.C. <laughs> yeah. really, really got after it, AJ. It's awesome. <laughs> Zeke, how old are you, buddy? 32. Nice. Holy shit. I did not know that. Happy yeah. birthday. What did you think he was? It might be 31. I'm, I'm, I get confused. That's a bad omen for the Penguins. Why? Why? Because he's a Blackhawks fan. It's his birthday. He's 32. Oh, no kid on the block. Bedard Bingo. with the hat trick. That's Bedard how many wins Bedard the Blackhawks have had the last two seasons. Ooh. Ooh. We actually knocked the, the Penguins out of the playoffs last year. So. Oh. Yeah, you're about to get payback for tonight. Yeah, suck it. <laughs> hey, well, we they take shots at Bedard, Bedard. But, but don't. But not the way. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Oh, I thought that, that one was good. looked good. Hey, will they try to run Bedard at all in his first game? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think the Pens will. Gino, might. Gino Malkin might. Someone should. Flower might. Gino carve him up. Yeah. All right, let's make some picks for tonight's game. Can we put the uh, the graphic up? Here we go, AJ. D-butt, get ready. Nashville Predators, <laughs> yes. Tampa yeah. Bay Lightning. Wow. Puck line? D-butt, yeah, just puck line for all these. Okay. Who okay. do you like? Let me Tampa Bay. Okay. Why, why aren't the Panthers playing open tonight? We were the second best team in the league last year. Well, because you guys have yeah, no fans. I agree. Uh, we're no trying cares. to make sure the ratings are high for, for week one. Uh, the the Lightning are favored in that one pretty pretty decently. Uh, AJ, who do you like? No Vasilevsky, though. Uh, whoa, oh, no Vasi? No Vasilevsky? No, he's out for, I'm out for a couple months. Okay, Everybody. I'll take the Nashville Preds then. Give me the Preds. Okay. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks, Pittsburgh Penguins. The Blackhawks are favored in this one on the road in Pittsburgh. Whoa. That's not true. No. That's, that's the puck line. Go to the money line. There it is. 
Okay, never mind. Heavy favorites. Here we go. Never. We fucking are awesome. Minus 140 on the 60-minute line. Pens to win in 60. Okay, love that. No overtime. A lot of overtime in hockey, though. AJ, what do you like? Pittsburgh. I saw uh, Sid interviewing Bedard. I like Sid's moxie. That was weird. Yeah, that was a question. That was pretty good. Those two are big fans of each other, I would assume. I like Sid's moxie as well. D, but Pittsburgh or Chicago? Give me the Blackhawks. I think wow. Connor oh, yeah. starts off with two goals mm-hmm. tonight. That's a good side. It's a problem. Nice. I'll take the Pittsburgh Penguins. <laughs> Until proven otherwise, Pittsburgh Penguins. I do like Connor Bedard goal, though. Yes. Okay. I think it's like plus 200 or something like that yep. in some places. Feels like he's probably going to score. He's the next one. It's opening night. The way we talked to him yesterday, he has no idea who he is, what he is. But what we do know is that guy's got a snapper. Mm-hmm. All right. In the final game of the evening, the Kraken mm-hmm. take on the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Golden Knights favored at home on Banner Night. Ty, what else do we need to know about the Golden Knights? Fucking Stoner has looked absolutely electric. I don't know what the pregame entertainment is, but I assume with it being Banner Night, it's going to be pretty special. Uh, Toughest barn in the NHL. We all know that. T-Mobile Arena is going to be rocking tonight. D-Butt, who do you like? Respect the hell out of the squad. Give me the Golden Knights. Yep. AJ? Stoner was holding the uh, cup last night, wasn't he? So give me the Knights. I'll take the Knights as well. All right. The Knights have won seven of the last eight against Seattle. And in six of those games, they've scored two or more goals. They've won by two or more goals. Mm. Okay. Kind of own the Kraken, no big deal. Don't let those Kraken get hot, though. <laughs> yeah, first night, too, a little jitters, maybe back on the ice. Right. Buzz back Banner. there, maybe a slow start. But the Golden Knights boys are built for it. Oh, yeah. As are the Pittsburgh Penguins. What are you doing? Wait, so all those Why'd teams, you do what you did? Then? All those teams got good fan bases? Uh, no. See, I, I've never seen anybody. Talk crack, they're the crack house. Yeah, the they're the Kraken? Yeah. Actually, yeah. They love the crackheads. Actually, are yeah. All those I would houses. say yes. All these teams For sure. have good fan base. Yeah. yeah. Go bolts. Okay. Yeah. Go right. Bolts. Go Bolts. I would like to make. I'd like to pick the Bolts, by the way. Okay. I had Nashville, and then I forgot about how much <laughs> I love the Bolts. Yep, go yeah, Bolts. Nashville that, is a hard time scoring. Yeah, they, they've fallen off. Fucking Samco still playing tonight? Yeah. Yeah, what are we talking about? Packa still playing? Big Pekka? He was yeah. a player. Our boy Ooh, got damn. traded, didn't he? Who? Patty? Big Rig? No, yeah, Big Rig. We need him on the pens. Bad. Oh, come on, bro. If this one goes in, pens are winning tonight. Okay. Here we go. A lot of okay. pressure on Sid and them boys. That's going in. <laughs> go ahead. You feel great. Oh, do you? Loser! Yeah. Oh, oh, stick tap for the Hawks. Damn. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see if the ball universe was right or not. Big shout out to everybody who stopped by today. And thank you all for watching. We know the show stinks. And the fact that you guys spend your afternoons with us, we can't thank you enough. Our store is about to have a lot of new stuff on it. Nice. Yeah, a little bit of a rebuild from the bottom up. uh, Teamed up with a different... Distributor? Yeah. Manufacturer? Yeah, but they are a manufacturer, but they're also distributor artists, like... Should have higher quality stuff. Here we one, go. One stop shop. Yeah, which fun. will be good. And hopefully, customer service will be much better too at this <laughs> yeah, place. Let's hope. Nice. Which is all I really care about because anytime we would announce a sale, we'd be like, oh, are we doing a sale? The only thing I would get for the next two weeks is how pissed everybody was about our store and our delivery and everything that happens. Yeah. Now we've kind of revisited. CFO Phil's been in the weeds, kind of breaking it all down, meeting with the new group. Shop 412 boys are helping us. So yeah. here we go. We got some good stuff coming. We can't thank you enough for being a part of our community. And we're going to continue to do this thing until you tell us not to anymore. Be your friend. Tell a friend something nice. It might change their life. Goodbye.